Back having a fine season. The halfback combo of Swatowski and Dash. Dash has been a factor for this hot, currently Hornet offense since the last two games of his freshman year. Ryan Dunning, the explosive flanker. Keenan Kirkland playing football for the first time. is an outstanding basketball player and has the body to play college football maybe. And rounding it out offensively, David Clifford for the Hornets. The give inside to Swatowski and he's up near the 30-yard line. And... But Tom, I think you know this. This first series is big for both teams. Obviously, that it always is. But especially tonight for Kersley, they want to establish this ball control uh, game that they have. They have good, big offensive linemen. They have the great back and dash, uh, and they and they need to keep the Grand Plank offense off the field. I don't think we're going to see anything fancy. They just want to grind it out. Uh, this. Uh, Third, third in, uh, what what do we have here? Six, uh, yeah, six yards, we have a pass play. And the throw, and we'll, a wide open right and done it, and it'll be incomplete. Wow, the throw <laughs> by Frey went about 35, 40 yards oh, going to his, uh, across his body to the left. I'm gonna tell you, Tom, this kid, uh, this Mike Frey's a good quarterback. He can throw the ball, and that's exactly what Kersley's offense needs. They need to, to throw, toss it in there once in a while to to, uh, to establish that running game, to help establish that running game. Don't allow the defense to stack up seven, eight guys, nine guys in the trenches there. Low snap, handle. Nice job by the punter. Beautiful, beautiful kick. Taken at the 21 yard line by McGee. McGee, oh, oh. oh runs over <laughs> one man and finally brought down at the 40 yard line. Tackle made by Jake Swatowski. Well, that's just the first of many big hits we're going to see tonight, Tom. And there's no question about that. And a big hit can be delivered by the offensive ball carrier, and, and that's that's what we saw right there as well. Nice collision. We'll get the Bobcat offensive unit for you on your screen right after this play. The give to Benton from John White. We've got flags on our first penalty of the ball game. Came from the referee, and so more than likely it's gonna be procedure or illegal motion. And let's take a look right now at that starting offense for Grand Blank. Where you see Joe Ragnone and White, it is an illegal motion call. And they'll step it off. The Bobcats offensively Markoff will go from the 39 to the 34. Yeah, we'll take a look at that offense in just a moment. 10.22 to go left here in the opening quarter. We are just a couple of minutes into this uh, Big Nine Conference showdown. There you see a good look from down low. Sol set back as Benton, and they'll go to Benton. Benton from deep in his own backfield. So I tell you, there's a nice effort, kept his legs driving, but Kersley's defense was in there all over him. This Tom, is one tough, strong defense. Tom Jackson leading the way, Gene. And uh, a gain of maybe one. It'll be second down and 14 after the one yard pickup by Benton. Well, we're gonna just run through the uh, offense for you for Grand Blank. Joey Schmidt, the split end. Across the front, Anthony Coleman, Justin Reichert, Matt Hoffman's the center, Eric Rude and Bob Kefchen. Carson Dock is the tight end. We'll get the backs and ends in a moment. And speaking of backs, Dale McGee, one of the very best in high school football, takes it off the right side, and he breaks it for a big gain. Looks to be nearly nine. They'll spot it right on the 45, and it is a pickup of nine. Ryan Dunning finally hauling him down. Boy, Tom, I really like the way McGee plays the game of football on both sides of the ball. That time, he was it was his individual effort to, to spring that out for some type of gain. He's a tough kid. He keeps his head up and really gives it everything he's got. He's got a fine game on both sides of the football. John White's your quarterback for the Bobcats, a senior, tested 16 touchdown throws last year. He's got six so far this year with just a single INT. The fullback, or the back tandem, is McGee and Benton, 23 and 8. Josh Ignis, 
is an outstanding end. Does it all with the foot as a kicker. And nice receiver. toss. Nice Speaking job. Receivers, wow. Ball on the money to Look at go. that effort. Look at that effort. He's still going. Pass complete to Joey Schmidt, Gene. And Schmidt not only catching the football, but doing some things with it after he gets it. Well, I'm going to tell you, White, the quarterback read that perfectly, though. He had time, which was key. The offensive line kept the defense out of there. He read it perfectly and delivered that ball like a shot. And what an effort by Joey Schmidt. Would give up. 21-yard pickup. First down and 10 for the Bobcats. The defensive front for Kersley. Rob Morris, 31. Derek Streeter, 22. Mike Caraman. Number 36, Tom Jackson, 91, and Keenan Car uh, Kirkland, the other defensive end. It's Reggie Benton up over the left side, and he runs to the hash mark on that side of the football field. He's brought down by Tom Lalonde. Rounding out that defense, let's go to the linebackers. Mentioned Tom Lalonde, number 34. Justin Cunningham might be the best of the triumvirate of linebackers for Kersley. Gary Gilliam. Also out there, the corners are Ryan Dunning, 21, and Rich Dosh, 24, an outstanding duo. And Swatalski, the one of the running backs on offense, plays free safety for Jack Pratt's ball club. Second down, now and nine. And the give to the second man through, and that's wow. McGee. Wow. He's oh. got running room. He's going to go the distance. No flag. Touchdown. Well, I tell you, Kersley's defense came with everything they had, and sometimes when you do that, you get caught with no more, no one deep, no no secondary level there, and McGee broke the, the first level, and he was gone. Dale McGee, the 34-yard touchdown run, Gene. We have seen him earlier this year against Powers with a 93-yard return, or a run back. Here's the kick, it's up and good. A 93-yard touchdown run, pardon me. And tonight, he strikes from 34 yards out. Well, it looked like Kersley got caught in a game right there on, on the short side of the field. It was blocked tremendously, and uh, no one touched him. And with his speed, he's gone. Well, let's see if we can get our crew in the truck to bring back back on replay. There you see the, the cheerleaders. A lot of cheering to do here for the Bobcats early. The band, the fans. Look at that crowd. That's a college crowd, Tom. That's a college. Look at that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Isn't it fantastic? Now, if we can bring the replay back, and folks are having some communication challenges between the press box and our truck. There you see a young, see a young fan out here. A couple <laughs> of them. They are early candidates for youngest fans in attendance. But we'll try and take a look at that replay of the touchdown run after the kickoff. Josh Ickes will tow it, or tee it up, pardon me, and get ready to put the toe on it for the Bobcats. Back deep again, it's the D and D duo, Dunning and Dosh. Twisting kick, Good and kick. hits and goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback for Kersley, and they'll start things on their own 20. Well, let's take a look at the replay now, if we can, on the touchdown run. And I don't know if we're going to have it. Again, folks, we're working through some challenges with our audio from our headsets down to the truck, and so it doesn't look as though we're going to be able to bring that replay up to you. Hornets now will start with their second possession of the football game. They begin from their own 20. And they trail 7-0. Man in motion is Dunning. And wow. head to the second wow. man through. Nowhere to run. Josh on the carry. And Bob Stolwald, first man to him. And Gene, that'll be a loss of a couple. Well, I'll tell you, it looks like Grand Blank will run a, a, a stunt, a very aggressive uh, linebacker blitz uh, through the middle there and uh, made a nice play. There was no one to block him. Bobcats come into this football game number one in the conference in offense, number one in the conference in defense. And it's Dunning, flanked to the right, double tight end look with the eye formation, play action fake to the deep back. And the throw a little bit too tall for Dunning. Well, they're going to have to establish that. They're going to have to hit a couple passes. Frey, we talked about it uh, the last series. He has the ability to do it. He's going to have to hit some shorter passes and that to loosen the defense up a little bit. And it, maybe yeah. a short pass to build some confidence as well? Yeah, yes, I think it's important, particularly in a game like this, this big game. 
that and they have to be able to give Dosh the football. He has to be able to touch the football and get to and pick up some yardage. Maybe Dosh is the man to go to with something out of the backfield. A little swing pass and let him create with his speed. You know, he, he was he did play quarterback last year, so I mean, oh, he's played. <laughs> he has every, the he has the ability to uh, to do just about anything out there. He has played everywhere they've been. Oh, there's a blitz! Watch out, backside, nice throw. And the pass complete, and no flags. It'll be a first down for the Hornets. Number 17, David Clifford, on the reception for the Hornets. Now that was a throw. Nice pass route run by Clifford. Nice catch. He looked it in all the way. And Frey took a shot. Here's a touchdown uh, run we're seeing on the screen there. Oh, there it is. I just yeah, saw we... the tail end of it, but the... Uh... Well, we're going to ask him to bring that up one more time. We'll talk about it after this play. If you can hear us in the truck, folks, we will bring it up one more time if we can after this play. The completion went from the 18 to the 33. It's good for 15 yards to Clifford and a first down and 10. Whoa. And had the camera go out of picture there or go out of focus. They give to Dosh. He's not out of focus as he busts over the 35 up near the 40. They'll spot it just shy. And let's take a look at that touchdown run again if we can by McGee. Well, I don't know that we're going to see it now. I guess we'll have to so We saw it once. That's we, all we need. We, we saw it once. We, we talked once. about it. Let's go forward. There it is right there. You see the tail end the of it? The tail end of it. And Nobody and close the, the key to The key to that was the good blocking uh, on the left side to Spring McGee. Back to action now on the field. Oh, and the wow. give inside to Dunning. And Dunning is hammered immediately. I'm telling you, Grand Blank's defensive line is just accelerating off the football, Tom. They are pushing the offensive line of Kersley back. Andrew Fletcher and Bob Solwald in on the tackle there and no gain by Dunning sets up a third down and three at the 40 the nose of the football right at the 40 yard line big third down conversion opportunity Kersley converted on third and 12 just a couple of plays ago no option, option. The uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. Ball uh -oh. on the ground. Bobcats recover wow Tom, in any big game, so I mean, you ask the coaches, what do they have to do? They have to control the turnovers. They have to limit the turnovers. They are going to happen. There's going to be a turnover, too, but they really have to limit that. And here we go. This is a huge turnover this early in the game. I think Bob Solwald had the, uh, re had the recovery. So it's first down and 10 for the Bobcats. And the give to Benton. Wow. And Benton wow. Watch the out. Watch Reggie out. Reggie Benton is going to go the distance. Wow. Touchdown. 38 yards out, Reggie Benton. Tom, same situation that they ran on the short side of the field when McGee scored a touchdown. Same play call, same blocking on the short side, on the right side this time, which happened to be the short side. And again, the great speed of Benton. Give him a crease out there, get him to the outside, and he's gone. Gene, when you've got one guy that has that kind of ability to do that, coaches think they're pretty fortunate. Joe Delaney has two, and they are lightning, uh, ready to strike with either one of them. They're, they're very special. They're very special, both those players. And the kick by Ignis is absolutely dead center. Perfect. And lots of leg on it by Ignis. We haven't seen the weakness yet. We've seen Grant Blaine come play that stiff defense. We've seen the great kicking game by Ignis. We've seen the great running uh, by the two. I call them All-State, uh, All-State or All-American. Well, we're going to hope, hopefully take a look at the replay here. As soon as you have it queued up, bring it in if we don't have a play going, folks. And, and again, a reminder to our audience at home, we are having a communication problem from the truck to our headset, so we are not able to get any cues from the truck with regards to replays. But we'll try to bring it back to you in a moment. Gene, one of the things here is the, the, the same D&D uh, tandem back there, Dunning and Dash, to receive Ignis's kick. But when you first started broadcasting with us about 10 years ago, you talked about sudden change situations. So far, Grant Blank has responded with big numbers on sudden change situations. Absolutely, Tom. Absolutely. As we see a nice return. He did a nice job of catching that ball and returning it. Who was that out there that was... 
Well, that was Kirkland yeah. nice on the return, job. and John Robbins on the tackle. Second tackle on special teams for Robbins so far for the Bobcats. So it's Kersley with their backs to the wall. They start from the 38, almost the 39, the exact spot where Reggie Benton just raced for a touchdown in the other direction for the Bobcats. Well, Kersey's offense can turn this thing around. They have tremendous striking power with Aver Dosh and Frey. Averaging a little over 29 points a game with a give inside to Rich Dosh. Tackled by Chris Van Etten. And a pickup of, uh, let's call it, uh, well, let's call it two. No, Coach Pratt said prior to the game that he had to keep that Grand Blank offense off the field. We see why now. Absolutely. I mean, it's they can score <laughs> from anywhere. Anywhere, anytime. Double tight end, flanker to the left side. I formation, look for the Hornets. Bray barking the signals out, play action, fake. Goes across the middle, nice complete route. to Kirkland. He's got uh -oh. room to run. Oh, he's oh, he gone. the block up. Kirkland's going to go the distance. Touchdown. Oh, he... Oh, he Who's whose ball is it? No touchdown. Who... An unbelievable strip what? by McGee. But they're going to say that he did not recover it until the knee was down of Kirkland. Tom, was he out of bounds? It looked like he grabbed the football. It looked like he He did. had the football. We're coming back this way, aren't we? And do we have a flag? We oh, have we flag. have a flag. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. And it's going to be against Grand Blank personal foul, roughing the quarterback. Okay. They'll decline it. So the 58-yard pass and then catch Frey to Kirkland will stand. What about the speed for Kirkland? He accelerated. I'm going to tell you something, though, Tom. He's an all-state football player, Reggie Benton. Reggie Benton was walking on that play. He got beat and he stopped. I don't like to see that out of any player, and I think I need to say something about it too because he's too good of a football player to do that. He's got a he play. needs to. He needs on every single play. He had the speed to catch him. If anyone did, he had the speed, and he got tied up and he let off there. But a great offensive play. How about McGee chasing him down? What about that play? Great play. I thought strip. he had the football, Tom. It sure looked like he did. Well, the Hornets will go to work with a chance and, and kind of a sudden change situation. Yeah, they respond to the touchdown from Grand Blank by coming back and a big play on second down and eight, a 58 yard pass and catch. Bray to That's Kirkland, a nice effort. touchdown, Dash. Rich Dash from one yard out, punches it in and the Hornets are back in this football game. Game's on, here we go. Game is on. I tell you what, when Kersley can come out and have Frey hit those receivers like that, to, uh, again, loosen up that defense, get back, give Dosh some opportunity to run that football, they're going to be very dangerous. And the point after attempt for the Hornets, it'll be number four, Eric Cool. Snap is perfect, the kick is up and looks to be good, and it is. So with 4.29 left to go in the opening quarter, Graham Blank sees their 14-point lead cut in half as the Hornets go 62 yards in three plays, and they do it in just a minute and five seconds. Pardon me, they do it in, in uh, 55 seconds. You know, Gene, we talked well, about it, and you mentioned that uh, Coach Jack Pratt uh, looking at his offense to try to be part of his defense and keep Grand Blank's offense off the field. When you score as quick as you do, like Kersley just did, well, it, it could work against you. Well, you could, but they're not going to take that touchdown away, no. Tom. Come on, you know. They are back in the game. They're doing exactly what they, they did exactly what they had to do. You know, Grand Blank's defense was coming hard, stuffing that running game. Kersey's offense said, okay, guys, I'll show, we can throw the ball as well, and if we have to, we will, and that's that's what we saw. Now their defense has to step up. Poole's kick is going to go into the end nice, zone. It'll nice be a touchback. Kick. So both teams with Ignis for Grand Blank and Hool for Kersley showing some leg out there, and 
helping to limit the returns a bit. And Kersley coming into the game in the first four games, Gene, had allowed two kickoff returns for scores. So that's big getting that touchback instead of allowing the speed of Grant Blank to come into play. Absolutely. Absolutely. 4.29 left to go in the opening quarter. Bobcats will start with their foot with the football, pardon me, on their 20-yard line. They'll have a receiver go to the left. That'll be Schmidt. A receiver to the right is Ignis. And pro set look. White back to throw on first down. It's complete to Schmidt. He draws a crowd, but he's going to pick up about seven on the reception. Graham Blank is so tough to defend. They have so many weapons, Tom. I mean, when you have a quarterback who can zip the ball in there and the receivers who can catch it like they do, then you have the backs and a big line. They're just so tough to defend. Rob what Morris a... along with, I believe it was John White in on the tackle for the Hornets. Pick up of seven, Gene. It'll be second down now and three. Uh oh, don't let him outside. Oh, He's going to go. Oh. Finally <laughs> run down by Tom Lalon, number 34, but not before a big pickup. Boy, I like that player. I keep saying and saying it, but I do like McGee. 16-yard pickup on the play. Good enough for a first down and then some for the Bobcats as they move closer to midfield. Ball now on the grand blank, 40, well, let's call it just shy of the 44. First and 10, clock running at 345. Uh oh, uh -oh. Hit, hit oh. oh my gosh, Picked up a block. not again. Oh, oh Josh I'll drilled tell you what. Rich <laughs> Josh comes over to make the tackle, Gino. But did you see Benton? Saw he was getting a, uh, the radar locked in by Josh, and Benton just put his shoulder right into him. I think they both delivered a pretty good ball. It was a good collision. Two great, great football players right there. So the run by Dosh after he took a lick a couple of yards into the linebacking area of Kersley. Ball now on the 21-yard line. Thirty-six yard run. I mean, what do you do? Look at this trips formation on the twenty yard line here. Trips and to the right. Give it to McGee. And give it to McGee and he bounces outside and he's off. Oh, you've got to tackle oh. Mr. McGee. <laughs> you don't wrap him up, you're in trouble. No, nope, you do. You have to wrap him, Tom. You have to pull him down and hang on. Dosh into the tackle for Kersley. And let's call the pickup a pickup of about six on the play. It'll be second down and four. The Bobcats on the near hash. Boy, their offense looks tuned tonight, Tom. They're just not making many mistakes at all. Ignis going wide to the left. He'll be a flanker on that left side. Doc, the tight end, is over there. Schmidt split to the right. Throw set look, reverse pivot, we've got a flag and it'll be an illegal motion call. Benton on the carry, but it's gonna come back as I believe McGee got just a little bit too early of a start and uh, the Hornets will get a chance to move the Bobcats back five on the penalty. Well, that's a break for the Hornets. Uh, that's a good pickup again. Little resistance, Benton went through there, picked up his yards. Here's the call, illegal motion. Joe Ragnone, your official. No, Matt Churchy, the umpire. Tom Rowe, your line judge. Head linesman is Dwayne Haskins, and your back judge is Doug Tipton. Two and 20 clock ticking here. It'll be second down and nine after the penalty. So the Hornets defensively get a little bit of the help from the yellow flag. Schmidt to the right, Ignis to the left, eye formation look this time. And the give to the second man, that's McGee. Oh, and a fine solo Good tackle. Job. Number 53 for the Hornets, that's Justin Cunningham. Six foot, 210 pounder, and he got to him quick. And he just, they brought him. They just, they brought him right from the middle and said, go, go get the ball carrier, babe. And he did. And in fact, Gene, he got him for a loss of one, so it's third down and 10.
So far, the Bobcats are one for one in third down situations. Again, the same look, Schmidt to the right, Ignis to the left, play action. Got the fake. tight end wide. Oh, he had a tight end wide the open. Corner, and it'll be incomplete. Oh. Well overthrown, and the tight end was open, maybe a little bit shorter with the uh, the 10 and out. Tom, he was running the under route and was absolutely wide open from the very beginning. Quite just missed him there. White going for the touchdown. and Looks like he might have had the first down opportunity to the underman. So it'll be fourth down, and Ignis, who's got a strong leg, will be placing the tee at the 27-yard line. No, the 28-yard line, it looks like. This will be a 38-yard attempt. Hmm. Thirty-eight-yard attempt by Ignis is up. He's got wow, all kinds of leg, and it no oh, wow. off to the right. Must have huh? gone to the right a smidge, and uh, I'll tell you what, that could have been good from another ten to fifteen oh, he, yards. He hit it, didn't he? He hit it. Just got to work the radar a little bit better. Tom, one thing I noticed right there was a snap. I think uh, Doc is their these are uh, all league tight end, but he's also their the snapper on the uh, uh, field goals and punts, I believe. But that time, that ball came rocketing back to that holder that time. He had plenty of time. It did a nice job there. Seven plays and uh, nothing to show for it. One eleven left to go here in the opening quarter. And the Hornets with the football, and they give it to Dash. Rich Dash tiptoeing through the secondary, and he picks up maybe seven. Little momentum switch here, change, shift, however you want to say it. Kersley is, uh, you can see their kids have an extra step in their, in their giddy up as they say, huh, Tom? Well, Gene, they've got to feel like they've weathered the storm a little bit here. Well. After the opportunity the Grand Blank had on that possession, let's see what the Hornets do with it. Dunning in motion to the opposite side of the field and Dosh on the carry. Uh -oh. And the ball's on the ground. It looked like he was down, Tom. It looked like his knee was down, but I heard no whistle. No whistle. There it is. Oh! <laughs> Tom, he was down. Well, let's see if we can show a replay on this one. If we one. see that replay, we're going to see that he was down. We had a pretty good view from here. There you see the but Bobcat sidelines. That's a turnover. That's a huge turnover. Now we'll see how the defense reacts. Great defense, that's a stand up now. Shut him Here's down. Here's the replay right here. See if he's down, see if that ball's out of there. Ooh, his right knee is down, he was being twisted back, but you know what, his left leg was still up. You know, they were pulling him away, that's, that's a tough one. That might have been a good call. No call. Good call. Good no Always call is. There. Oh, and the give now to McGee. Graham Blank with the football. They begin the possession on the 34-yard line of Kersley. Ball carrier brought down by Chad Drennan, it looked like. And that'll be the end of the opening quarter of play here from Grand Blank High School. A standing room only crowd. They are circling the field at the fences. The Kersley side pack, the Grand Blank side pack, Outstanding night for high school football. You just don't spend three bucks any better oh, this than is, high school football. This is just fantastic. And what a first quarter we had. How about that excitement? We had a little bit of everything out there. And there you see the scoreboard, beautiful scoreboard. Field dedicated in the name and the honor of Frank Thomas last year. And would like to again, the we were supposed to be out at Gene, and it was a night where we had truck problems, unfortunately, and uh, it was our loss, certainly, that we weren't able to be here for that one, but tonight, it is... You know, the Grand Blank people have come in and, and uh, put new stands in sure. here, and uh, it's it's really, uh, they've really uh, made it nice to come and watch a football game now. It's one of the best stadiums in the area, certainly, and uh, when, you, when you look at the work that Andy Piazza and his staff have done out here, the athletic boosters, terrific work. Hats off to them. Jan, the athletic secretary, helping make this broadcast possible. Appreciate your support, uh, not only with this ball game, Jan, but all the other ball games through the years. And we'll be out here for girls high school swimming in just a couple of weeks. And receivers to both sides. We've got flags, we've got whistles, and they're going to, Sorted out in the middle. 
and it'll be against the defense. So, Kersley with the encroachment call. You know, Tom, we talked about limiting the turnovers. That's that's obviously, that, that's big in a big game. But the mistakes, the mental mistakes like we just saw, that's huge too. Penalties like that are just uh, just mental mistakes. You gotta be disciplined, you gotta hold yourself in. And we've seen them on both sides tonight, That the same type of penalty. Certainly, some of that is to be expected a little bit, you, but at some point you just, you've gotta regroup and focus. That's where your discipline comes in and uh, you're, you do have to stay focused. Little crossing action in the backfield, the fake to Benton one way, and they come back to McGee looks the like, other, and looks like we'll another flag. See what we have here. We're gonna. Have, I don't know that it's a flag, and I think what I saw thrown, Gene, might have been a pout. Don't we? Do we have a? Well, we do have a flag. I think we have a hold out oh, there, Tom. Oh yeah, I was screened by one of the the uh, players out there, and there is the flag, and so it'll be a walk off. We talked about it. It's. A little addition by subtraction. One team gives away five. Now Grant Blank is hit with the 10 yard spot foul on the hold. You're going to so have them. You're going to have some penalties. It's a tough game. People are flying around and giving 110% out there. But you must limit those things, and they are starting to hurt Grant Blank more than ever Kersley. Third down, or check, check that, second down and 13 to go for the Bobcats. Trips to the left side. The last time this situation played out, they had McGee run the football. Now, we're going to throw across the middle. Nice oh, and a catch. Fine catch. Great catch. Joey Schmidt a, reaching back. Again, Joey Schmidt. Tackle by Tom Lalon. Boy, does he have nice hands. Great cut. I tell you, the toughest, toughest route to catch as a wide receiver is that post route coming across there because you know as soon as you catch the ball time, you're going to get tattooed. And he, his concentration was great, and he reached up there and pulled it down. He pulled it down good for a 15-yard pickup, so it'll be first down and 10 for the Bobcats. Clock at the 11-minute mark in running. Now they give it the second man through. It's Dale McGee, and McGee bouncing off bodies until he's finally brought down inside the 20. And it looks like it'll be near the 17-yard line. Chad Drennan on the tackle. They'll mark it on the 18, so it'll be a pickup of two for McGee. It's gonna leave a second down and eight from the 18-yard line. Schmidt is split to the right, flanker to the left side is Ignis. Pro set look. Give to the second man through. And it's Oh Benton. my gosh. Oh, and a fine oh play. Boy. Tripping him up. First man to him, Gilliam. And I also think that 31, Gilliam number three, I also think Rob Morris might have been in there as well. And that's a big play, Tom. He was off. Sure Attained was. that great quickness and speed like that to bring him down. That's a that's a great play by those kids. They limit him to a two-yard gain, and we've got a whistle, and it'll be a timeout called by the Bobcats. It'll set up a third down now and six. That's a good timeout, Tom. It's, uh, this is a big play for Graham Blank. This is, they've kind of sustained this drive, and they want to continue. It's a good timeout. Delaney will go down there and figure out what the best possible play will be. Well, yeah, you know, that with the timeout, certainly it gives the defense a chance to, to regroup a little bit. But this is one of those possessions that's important because for Grant Blank, they have a chance, a real chance, with a score in this possession to put Kersley in another 14-point, not only put them in a 14-point hole, but put them in a situation again where they have got to come back and, uh, and face a little more adversity. And at, over the course of a game, that can wear teams down. Not just physically our team's going to be wore, worn down, but mentally, and this would really go a long way towards establishing the dominance by Grand Blank's offensive line. Tom, well said. Thank you. 
appreciate that. <laughs> occasionally, well said. Occasionally You're happens. exactly right. That's the way I feel about it. No, that's the facts. Those are facts. McGee, the sole setback, and they go to the draw yep. to McGee again. And McGee's got that running run. room. Wow. Wow, inside the 10. He's going to have first down yardage. So many weapons, so many different areas to attack that defense. We've seen several different play calls tonight. But when you have kids like that who want to accelerate and, and uh, just give 100% all the time, what, what value do they add to this program? Well, McGee picks up eight yards, and that's good enough for the first down. It's first and goal from the eight. Swatalski on the tackle for the Bobcats. Or for the Hornets, pardon me. Now it's McGee again. Oh, McGee geez. for the touchdown. Give him a crease. He'll take it. He'll take that crease. And that's what the offensive line did. Nice job. They're doing a good job of establishing that line of scrimmage. Now let's talk about that offensive line. Anthony Coleman, Justin Reichert. Double nickel, Matt Hoffman, the center. Eric Rude, number 63. Bob Kefchen, the right tackle. Carson Dock, your tight end. And then the kick by Ignis is up, and it is good. 21 to 7. Well, after the fumble, the Bobcats take advantage of the turnover and put points up on the board, and they've extended the lead to 14 points once again. Yeah, I'm not sure if we, we can bring that back on replay or not while the teams are getting ready. Fine what you'll run. see, Tom, if we can't get it back, where you'll see it, the offensive line, and particularly the left side, fire off the football, stay on their blocks, give that Chris to, crease to McGee, and McGee's off. <laughs> Six plays, 34 yards. Your scoring drive. There you see our score, Grand Blank 21, Kersley 7. 9.20 left to go in the second quarter, and Ignis with the kick. Short this time, hits on about the 17, picked up by, I believe it's Dash. Oh, and Dash with a good block, he works off of right in front of him. I think the block was made by number 67, Kevin uh, Vandenberg with a nice block, and Dash went from the 10 to the 25, finally brought down by Jeff Rosen. You know, Tom Dash has played on the varsity teams in the football, baseball, and basketball from his freshman year. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. We got a whistle, and I think we've got the player, we got a timeout by the Bobcats, we do. You know, when you have a, an athlete like that, who's able to contribute in, in so many different sports and do it at an early age. By the time he's a senior, the coaches in the Big Nine Conference, in this case the Big Nine, I think are probably going to go to his commencement exercises just to make sure that he's gone. Make sure that, <laughs> yeah. that he isn't going to he isn't gonna find a way to come back because he's been around forever and he's been a, a, an outstanding Well, as I, read in the Flint, as I read in the, in the Flint Journal, he's, he's a good uh, student as well. A nice piece in there. Uh, for the student athlete of the week this past week. Hats off to both schools and their athletic programs. Bobcats and the Hornets. The Hornets with the captain's club and the dedication of that organization, of uh, their captains through the years. And the Bobcats with student athletes also. With both schools have had student athletes recognized through the Flint Journal's Athlete of the Week program and the Kiwanis Club student athlete program, making sure it's done on both sides of the coin, in the classroom and the field of competition. Double tight end look, flanker to the left side for the Hornets. High formation, the give to the second man through, that's Dosh. And Dosh hit by Kevin Stoner. Boy, Tom, they do, they're having a difficult time running the football. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious, but right now, Grant Blake's playing tough defense up the middle. No question, they need to loosen it up. They need to go to the air, get to the outside. Pickup of two on the play as the Hornets work against the number one defense in the Big Nine Conference. The Bobcats allowing just 7.3 points per game in league play. 
give to the second man through. That's Dunning, and Dunning knifing forward, bouncing off that right side, and he's shy of the 35, but still a pretty good pickup, and that'll be a pickup of, looks like six, brought down by Ryan Reeves. And they're gonna call it third and one, so a pickup of seven. 8.14 to go here in the opening half of play. Along with Gene Johnson, I'm Tom Skinner with the Comcast. Channel oh, 17. he's gone. Watch out. Ryan Dunning with a nice adjustment. There's and McGee's going to go after him, Dunning though. It's 31. <laughs> Rob Morris on the carry. How about that? Brought down by Dale McGee. Dale McGee made the tackle. You know, you have to love it. They're, they're, they're cursing these teams just hanging around. You're just hanging around, making the big plays. They're not going away. Morris with the big carry from the 34-yard line down to the 17, a 49-yard pickup. I'm impressed with the heart of Kersley right now. Oh, it's huge right now, Tom. Double tight end look by the Hornets. Flanker to the right side with the eye formation set. Defense in the five-man front for the Cats. Dosh on the second man through, and he'll get back near the original line of scrimmage, but not much more. John Robbins among several Bobcats helping to bring him down, and Robbins has done it on defense and on special teams. I like the work of Mr. He's, Robbins out there. He's getting 54. around. You're right. He's getting around tonight. Talk about heart, though. Would you expect anything less from a Jack Crack coach team? I no mean, way. There's, there's no way. They will not at any point ever give up. Double tight end look again. Flanker to the left side with the eye formation. Defense with looks like six guys up on the front right now. They brought a linebacker. Yeah, they're bringing them all now. Oh, and Dash. Yeah. Drawing a crowd like he's handing out money. Yeah. See, now they have to be able to audible out of that. They had, <laughs> they had eight, nine guys on that line bringing up Tom. Football will be about the original line of scrimmage. No gain again. Third down now and 10. Clock running at 6 and 30 to go here in the opening half. Same double tight end look. Flanker to the right side. Looks to be. Now they're going to throw across oh. the middle. Ball knocked down and maybe intercepted. Is it, is, did he get it? Intercepted by number 92. Did he get it? Chris Van Etten. You call nope. it. You called the interception. Did he nope, get it? No, we're going to say fourth no. down. I tell you, the reason he didn't get it is Mike Frey went after his own ball and knocked it out of his hands. Wow, Van yep. Etten went up. It was kind of a jump ball situation. <laughs> the it Hornets sure was. With the what break a that crazy time. Crazy play. Strong arms and hands of Frey to rip it out. Another long field goal try. Field goal attempt that will be spotted at the 26 at the 10 of the end zone. A 36-yarder. Kick is up and a... It's oh, long enough to the line to the right. Oh. Both kickers have shown they've got the leg. They've got the leg. They have the leg. I bet they're soccer players. That's a huge stop for Graham Blank right there. That was that was really uh, a big stop. Kersley had some momentum, and they were rolling, and uh, they could have put that touchdown on the board. That would have certainly uh, turn their spirits around a little bit. Well, like we talked about, Kersley's not going away. No, they're not. No. Plenty of time here for the Bobcats, especially with the quickness that they can strike you with, and uh, the, the distance of the field does not matter at all. No. 5-38 and 38 to go here in the opening half. Give to the second man through, and it's Benton. Look oh, at and he that. breaks a couple of Look tackles. Look at that. And Benton with a big game. Not only does he have quickness and great acceleration, he has good strength. Two tacklers who are on him. They should have been thrown for a one-two yard uh, gain at, at most. Gary Gilliam on the tackle eventually along with, looks like Ryan Dunning out there. But Benton broke a couple of tackles, Gene, and you've got to, you cannot arm tackle Benton or McGee. No. Or, or any Dosh other great back. For that or, or Dosh or any other great back, you're right. Pick up a 15 on the play. Give to McGee this time. And 
And they unpile, and Tom Lalonde in there, along with Gilliam, and McGee picking up, oh, I think we'll call it two, second and eight. There you see the sidelines. Some of the players on that sideline of the Grand Blank side as we go back to our game picture, game cover camera, and the play action fake by White. White is going to be Oh, get a face mask all the time. You know what? I, it, looked like, it looked like if it wasn't a face mask, it was high on the collar and the shoulder pad. And let's take a look. If we can, let's watch this again. Because Kirkland is, is grabbing the shoulder pads, saying, hey, I got him right here, not up on the, the face mask. Now they're going to talk with the, the Hornets right now. They've talked to both teams. And it, Did we have a hold? We had a hold. That's what it yes, was. yes. So not a, Kirkland was responding as if he might have been called. Here's the replay. Watch how he cut it. Oh, oh, yeah, we had a hold. The, the offensive lineman for GB reached out and tried to grab him. You know what? That's one of those where you, you almost have to let him go. Now it's a spot foul, and that's a big, big that's penalty. That's big. That's a great defensive play right there. Man, I tell you what. And I think they waved the penalty off. They, they uh, said the heckler they didn't want to give another down. They took the, the, uh, the, the uh, loss here. So third and 17, screen pass set up. Nope, they're going to go long. Uh-oh, oh, geez. And Dosh, Dosh the interception. Great interception. Working Great. against number one, Ray Stevens. And Dosh, 24, coming up with the INT. And there's your big play man who does it on both sides of the ball like McGee does and like Benton does. Your star players will be stars in big games, and we're seeing it tonight. They will make the big plays. They have to make the big plays. Boy, he covered him well right there. The ball was a little bit underthrown, but Dosh was right there the whole way. A little bit of pressure by Kersley's front. Might have forced White to let go of it a little sooner than he wanted. Kersley begins the drive on their own 30-yard line. And the give by to Dash is up over the 31 to the 32, brought down by Brian Root. And they'll call it a pickup of two. Second down and eight for the Hornets. Clock at three and 20 to go here. Opening half a play. Dunning wide to the right. Play action fake. Oh, a nice job by Doc to come up with a nice block. Draw. And Clifford on the reception at the 44. That'll be good enough for the first down. 12 yard gain. Tom, that route was covered early. Matter of fact, it was double covered early. Frey just waited, 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 bought some time and zipped it in there. Dosh helping by the time by coming back and making a block. Good job by Dosh. Absolutely. Hornets with the football on the move. Clock at 2.57 and counting. Left to go in the second quarter. Football on the Kersley 44-yard line. Wingbacks to both sides. And they'll go with the reverse. Nice Dunning with it. Oh, brought McGee. down. Oh. A great tackle out there by Dale McGee. McGee. McGee, what a great play he made. Fought off the pulling guard. Kept him to the outside. Come back in. Reached to the right-hand side hand. Made the tackle. That was a great play, Tom. You know, when you, when you come out on defense, you see a blocker coming at you. A lot of guys love the blocker engage you. And that time it looked like Dunning was able to get the hand out and play off him very well and holding Dunning to a minus three yards. High formation look, straight drop back pass. Got a screen. Screen to the left. Sniff down on the other side. Defense. Bitten on the other side. For one All-Stater to the other making big plays. Swoltowski, the receiver. Just a matter of Benton sniffing out that screen play that time, just being right there on the spot. Got to put a helmet on him, though. You got to try to block him out there. In a timeout on the field, it's a loss of five, Gino. So it's third down now and 12. 
for the Hornets, and this is big for Kersley right now. They need to keep the drive going if for no other reason than to keep Graham Blank from having a chance to... From getting back on the field offensively, Absolutely. right, Absolutely. Absolutely. I like what I see with Fredo. I like it when they roll him out, give him some time there. And if he can throw the ball, he'll hit those receivers. He's a very accurate passer. A little pass run option, too, will stretch the defense a little bit. Yep. Hey, Gene, uh, for our fans, I uh, want to remind you, it's not uncommon to gather next to the playing court and field and wait for an opportunity to get into a game. And that chance is waiting for you right now. You can help kids in your community in the process by becoming a school coach or registered game official. You got next. For more information, contact your local school administ athletic administrator or the Michigan High School Athletic Association in East Lansing. This is a public service message from the MHSAA and Comcast Cable, Channel 17. High formation, look again. Get the receiver across the middle. There he is, yes, look at that. What it's a play. Look at the speed, look at that. Oh, oh and he's down man. inside the 10 yard line. Brought down by Ryan Reeves. David Clifford on the reception. I'm telling you, use Frey. He's a weapon. He needs to continue to throw the football. And Clifford, with that speed, he was outrunning Ben. Ben's the fastest man in this league. 46 yards on the completion. And it sets up first down now from the 12. Hornets will send Dunning flank to the left. Double tight end look. Play action, fake the dash. They've got two men in the end zone. Kirkland is the man they go to, and yeah. they overthrow him. Frey a little too tall on the throw as he rolled to his left. Roll to the left, has to stop and come back on that, but that was a safe throw. Don't put that ball in it to be intercepted at this point. 1.41, the clock stopped on the incompletion. It'll set up second down and 10. Kersley on the grand blank. Tom, this is 12. so, so big for Kersley to put this ball in the end zone right now, going in at halftime. So important. Trips to the right side, the toss to Dosh. He's got running room. Uh oh, we got oh, a we hold. Got a flag, and it's going to come back on the hold as the Hornets, uh, somebody hooked up in there with the hands and the arms. So walled on the tackle for the Bobcats. So the penalty is going against Kersley. Dale McGee, the defensive captain, out there talking it over with the referee, Joe Ragnon, right now. And I think they'll take this penalty. Now it's not a matter of, of downs uh, as much as they want distance. They want to force well, they need Kersley to, put, to. That's right, Tom. They're going to they're gonna step this one off. No Spot question foul. about that. It'll be marked off from the 12, so they'll take it out to the 22 where it'll be second down and 20. Clifford's a weapon. Afraid of Clifford. And they've gone to Kirkland. They've overthrown Kirkland, but Kirkland's a big target as well. Yeah, He's a basketball player, soft hands. Good ne speed, can go up and get it. Nephew of Grover Kirkland, head basketball coach at Northwestern. Play action, fake the dash. Dosh is open to the flat. Oh, Nobody's on it. He's oh, got it. It's going to be a touchdown. Kersley. Oh, what a oh, throw catch. A defensive mix up there, and Dosh is in for the score. I think it was a brilliant offensive play call right there. The play, we'll see if we can bring it back on replay. The, oh. we, if we can, you'll see, Gene, they go play action, fake the Dosh. That sucked up the linebacker, Just, I think. Where was the D back? Where, where was the halfback, defensive halfback there? After the extra point attempt, we'll hopefully bring that replay back for you. The bottom line, Tom, that was an excellent throw and a great over-the-shoulder catch by Dosh. Yeah, not an and easy And a very catch. important score. The kick is up, looks to be true, and it is. That was huge. And with 1.14 left in the opening half, here's the replay again. Well, let's look at that Over kid. Look, good shoulder. concentration. Where are they at? Nobody's there. Where are they at? Let's see if we can bring it back one there, more time. And you see Ben there on the screen there. What? Nobody where are we blowing at side. here, guys? What, what's happening? Now, Gene, this is one of those situations that we saw a couple of weeks ago. In, the, in fact, if you have the replay, let's bring it back one more time. Here it is. This is after the play action fake. I mean, there's nobody near him. 
Well, he's coming out of the backfield. There's no question there, but still, someone's got to pick him up. It looked like they were in a man-type coverage, but someone had to pick him up with, coming out of there. Maybe with the play-action fake, that Just was that linebacker sucked in there that couldn't get back on the on Dosh. If you recall, the Chargers scored late in the first half against Grand Blank, and with about a minute, a uh, minute and 15, minute and 20, Grand Blank got it back and went down and scored on a throw to McGee with about 25, 30 seconds left. Grand Blank is still dangerous. <laughs> Anytime, anywhere. Yes, they are. Want to thank our spotter and statistician, uh, Jenny Posey, from or uh, from uh, U of M Flint, uh, doing an internship with us here with the Comcast during our summer and fall seasons. Appreciate her work up here. Also want to thank the athletic staff here from Grand Blank. Andy Piazza and his staff making us feel so welcome up here in the, the booth and, and out here among the 10,000 strong here tonight. Single setback is Benton, and they give to him. Tom Lalonde on the tackle. Benton uh, for no gain. Sets up second down now and 10. Van Blank from their own 20. Split right slot, uh, flank or left slot on the right side as well. Oh, and the pump fake, they're gonna That's go to interception. Stevens. Oh, oh just out. Nearly just out. intercepted by Dunning. He tried to keep the toes in, just could not do it. Good defense, Dunning was back there. Good defense, well good defense. Never let anyone get behind you in the prevent type defense that they're playing there. Did a nice job there coming third over. Third and ten here, Gino. If Graham Blank doesn't convert on third down, they'll be forced to punt. Look for Kersley. If it's not an incompletion, look for Kersley to use a timeout here. Absolutely. Sure. And what we're seeing is a little momentum change once again. Blanker to the right side is Ignis. Schmidt split to the left. Tight end is to the right of the quarterback, White. High formation to give to the draw to Dunning. And Dunning, trying to avoid tacklers, does so. A couple of uh, would-be Hornet tacklers go by the wayside, but McGee finally brought down. Well short, and there's, there's your time timeout. Out. There's the timeout. Smart to call. A pickup, let's call it four by McGee. One team. So it'll set up fourth down right and six. One and team, right here. The Bobcats will be forced to punt wind. Looks to be, well, I, with, with my direction here, looks to be going to the south, southwest a little bit. I call it southwest, huh? So a little bit. To the advantage of not, the punter. Not, not major. Not, but I'm going to tell you what, Kersley's coming after this. Lower your risk of breast cancer. Learn techniques to effectively live with the disease and discover current treatment options. It's all part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month held throughout Genesee County during October. Free programs include health and fitness activities, cooking and nutrition demonstrations, free breast cancer screenings, caregiver and treatment options. And welcome back as we changed, we had to make a tape change there, folks. Welcome back with that timeout. It allowed us to do it. Back to punt. There you see the Hornet defense. Let's see if they go for it. Back to receive this is Dosh. It looks like they, oh, they, they have a return on. They have a return on. By Ignis, caught by Get Dosh. Get to the sideline, Dosh. He goes to the sidelines. He's up near midfield. Timeout with eight seconds left. Or no, is that eight-tenth of a second? I think that's eight seconds, Tom. Eight seconds, okay. And the Hornets will get the football from the four, their own 49. <laughs> and there you see the clock in the background. Hornets to the line of scrimmage. Uh, one chance, just there. a loft one down here toward the end zone. Trips to the right. No. Yeah, there it goes. There he is! Oh, he just couldn't get in the ball. Intercepted. Number 85, that's, that's Billy Leach. Billy Leach. Stayed home, made a nice play. What a first.
first half. I don't. What a heck of a first half. I don't think that ball was a lateral either. It had to be a lateral in order for it to, to for them to be able to throw the ball. That's what the coaching staff's talking about right now as they walk off the field. Tom, that was not a lateral Let's pass. Let's see if you bring that replay back. Uh, but, uh, believe me, it wasn't. Front. It was thrown forward. He caught it two, three yards in front of the quarterback. Dosh did behind the line of scrimmage still. He's behind the line of scrimmage, but it was not but it was not um, it was not uh, behind Frey behind, who threw the ball. Behind Frey, exactly. It was a fo if the ball went forward, there should have been a penalty. I didn't see the flag there. It was Here it is again. Well, there's that's no question. Forward, that's a forward there's no pass. question about it. Yeah, that's a forward pass and uh, no not, you know, not important, not important part of the game. Uh, for, fortunately, it did not hurt uh, the Bobcats. Uh, because that, in that play, that instance, it, it definitely was a forward oh, pass. Oh, yeah, that would have been too bad. But nevertheless, a great first half, and it's been oh. fun, and we're going to have a great second half here. Well, our halftime score, Grand Blank 21, Kersley 14. Folks, we've got 24 minutes left, and I guarantee you, with anything like the first 24, we're in for a wild one. Make sure your shoulder harness and your seat belt are fixed properly when you return. We'll be back after these messages for more from Grand Blake High School's Frank Thomas Field. South, southwest a little bit. Along with Gene Johnson, I'm Tom Skinner. And... There you see the Bobcats and the Hornets in the background here at Frank Thomas Field. Gene, as they get loosened up, try to stretch things out a little bit after the halftime break. First of all, on the visitor's side, Jack Pratt. His team has been behind twice by 14 points. They've come back. They've responded each time to pull back to within seven. That's where they're at right now. What might Jack Pratt have said, he and his coaches, to the team at halftime? Well, uh, I'm sure what Coach Pratt said was, hey, guys, we're in this game. This game is ours. We have the momentum. We can move the ball. We can stop them. We can do the things that it takes to win this thing. we got to come out here. We've got to play hard, continue to do the things that we do best, and just play hard, and we're going to win this thing. And I tell you what, you know Jack Pratt coach teams over the years, they play with that heart and determination. I like the chances of this Kersley football team in the second half. Okay, let's go to the other side of the football. Different locker room. Uh, Joe Delaney and his staff, uh, his team has shown not only tonight but literally all year that they are a threat to score from anywhere on the field, and we've seen evidence of that tonight. They have the lead now at seven points after leading by 14 a couple of different times. What do they tell their team? What do they tell their chargers out there on the field as uh, they get ready for what the they final say 24? What is, guys, we're going to go back to the basics. We're going to go back to how we started this football game out because as the game progressed, they were making some mistakes. They weren't sustaining their blocks. The big plays weren't there, although they can move the ball, and we see that. We know they're explosive. They have the talent. They've got to go back, refocus, come out to second half with the same intensity that they came out in the first half. Well, the Bobcat charges with the 21 points on the board. The Hornet charges with 14. The media from all three of the networks here, Comcast here, writers from the different newspapers from the area uh, here. And this is a night for high school football to be showcased at its very best. And we're seeing it played at an extremely high level. And we're looking forward to a great second half. Again, along with Gene Johnson, I'm Tom Skinner. Jenny Posey also in the mix here. As we get set to start the third quarter here at Grand Blanc High School. Kicking off for the Hornets. Eric Houle and his kick is an end-over-ender that sends McGee to the goal line, and it'll be a touchback as he steps back into the end zone trying to field the kick from Houle, and it'll be football at the 20 for Grand Blank. Gene, what do you see here in the opening series for Grand Blank? It's not broke, don't fix it type of a mentality? Or? No, just go right back to the, exactly how they opened up this ball game, the same play calling, but what's key is these players have to go out there with intensity. They can't drag, they can't look beside them and have someone else do the job. They have to, as individuals, do their job on every single play. Bobcats with receivers to both sides, Schmidt to the near side, Ignis to the left. 
Give inside to McGee, and he's tackled by Tom Lalonde, among others. Looked like Lalonde was in there, and maybe Todd Beagle as well. I'm not sure if Beagle uh, opened the half or not. It looked like there was an, if it wasn't 88, it might, oh, it could have been 88. He's out there. Again, the starters for Grand Blank offensively. Schmidt, the split end. Uh, Carson Dock, the tight end. From tackle to tackle, starting on the left side, Anthony Coleman, 60-62. Justin Reichert is your left guard. Your center, double nickel. Matt Hoffman, Eric Rude, the right guard. As the give goes to Benton. And Boy, Benton he has some room. room. And Bob, he's running behind Rude and Bob Kefjan on that right side. And he had some room, a great hole. Nice job coming off that offensive line. That's what they have to continue to do. Kersley's bringing people. They're coming with great intensity. And once that uh, first wave is broken with that speed of Benton and McGee, could be trouble. And the pickup for Benton. Let's call it a pickup of 12 on the play. So it's first and 10 for Grand Blank. Again, receivers to both sides. The give to McGee this time. He bounces off the left side. And he's uh -oh, what a block running there. room to the right. McGee finally brought down after he crosses midfield. Tackled by number 57, Mark Grimes. But not before he makes the big pickup. That's a great effort by McGee, but I'm telling you, the wide out, Josh McGee. Uh, what's Josh's uh, Ignis? Ignis is, uh, is what I'm uh, yeah, trying to say. Number 80 out there doing it. You know, he kicks, he does everything for him out there. And I call him the soccer player. But I'm going to tell you what, he came back and had a great crap back block to Spring McGee. He's more than a soccer player. <laughs> this guy can do it all. Ignis with the nice blocking out there. Now the what a hole. What Benton a hole. With a stiff arm. He's got running room. That's a oh. flag. Yeah, that's that's way way late there. That flag will be or that penalty will be tacked on after the the pickup is established. And they're going to say it looks like the football will be about the 37 yard line. Or pardon me, yeah, the 37. So it's a gain of 10. It looks like a no, gain of nine. Tom, this is a violent, violent game. The, the, the players are flying around out there trying to make the big plays, but you have to play under control, and there was no reason for that. That was four yards out of bounds when he made that hit. I like the intensity, but you've got to get under control a little bit more. So you have the pickup of 10 on the play, then you tack on 15 more, and it's first and 10 GB on the Kersley. 21 yard line and I tell you what Grant Blank doesn't need that kind of help so no, they give them 15 don't. more they'll take it no they don't Ignis to the left they go to Benton inside tripped up by Swatalski initially and finished off by Keenan Kirkland boy Tom you give these two backs uh, just a crease and they're just so good so explosive Five yards with that crease work by Benton. So it's second down and five for the Bobcats. And going wide to the left, number 82, that's Chris Burns. To the right, it's Ignis. Sole setback is McGee. And they'll give it to McGee. Oh, whoa. He's hit immediately. Whoa. Appeared to be a bust of play, Tom. That was a very slow developing play. First man to him was Justin Cunningham. Keenan Kirkland finished him off. And they'll say he picked up one on the play. But he got hit about three yards in the backfield. Very slow developing. Almost like McGee started one way and said, oops, it came back the other way. And by the time he got the ball, <laughs> the defense was there. Check that. He did lose some yardage on the play. Lost four, so it's third down now and nine. With the opening drive of the second half, the Bobcats on the move. And they are at the 20-yard line of Kersley. Receivers trips to the left. Swing it to McGee in the little flat area on the left. Comes back this way. He's got all day. Great he can get vision. to the outside. McGee is shaking two. Now three tackles. Finally brought down, but it took 
four different hits. And finally, Rich Dosh, and Rich Dosh helping McGee up off the field. I tell you what, Rich Dosh went and put the hammer on McGee, dragged him down, and helped him up. These two oh, that's, teams, that's beautiful. That's beautiful to be able to do that. I think that was just a little fluke. We saw the, the uh, unsportsmanlike late hit over the no. near sidelines. These two teams don't play that way. That's that right. too well. That's right. You're exactly right, Tom. And I didn't mean that to be an intentional oh, hit no, out of oh. bounds there. That was just the intensity of the play. But the, you had to love the intensity. Look Here's at the, the leg. Kick. There's the leg. Oh, and it's got the leg, but it's going to be up. To the right leg. again. 37-yard attempt. They bend, but they don't break. That's what we can say about this Kersley defense. You know, they bend a little bit, but they, they stuffed them when they had to. Now watch for Frey. Watch, watch the passing game kick in a little bit more in the second half for Kersley. I really anticipate. I mean, they have done it so well with so much success that they're going to have to keep the ball in the air a little bit. Kersley taking over with 8.18 left in the third. Receiver to the right looks to be Dunning. They go to the toss to Dosh. Dosh around the right side, picks up a block from his wide receiver, and he's out near first down yardage. Drive beginning on the 20-yard line for Kersley. I tell you what, old Coach Pratt's in no hurry to score. He just wants to score. Eat up that clock, take the ball down the field, have positive yards with that running game. First down and 10 for the Hornets on their 32-yard line. Pickup of 12 on the play. Receiver to the right side. They go to the deep back. That's Dosh. Dosh over the right side of that Kersley offensive line. And he's got what looks to be nearly five yards. The Hornets with Curtis West, the left tackle. Greg McLean, the left guard. Mike Anderson, the center. Mark Grimes, the right guard. And Mike Alpin, the right tackle. And they're going to give him a gain of... Five on the play, and so it'll be second down and five. Both offensive lines have done some fine work up front. Both teams have come up empty on field goal attempts against bend but don't break defenses. Receiver to the right side. Play action, fake the dive. Uh -oh. We're gonna go oh, he on. has him. Ball is no. overthrown. Just a smidge. It looked like it was Dunning out there. There you see Ryan Dunning. And Gene, when you talk about Ryan Dunning, it, Joe Delaney was concerned about him offensively, or pardon me, on defense. One of the things he felt that they had to do was try to contain Dodge. But right behind that, they wanted to make sure they limited the big play potential of uh, Ryan Dunning. So far, they've done that. They've done that so far, sure. Yep. Third down and five, the Bobcat crowd down below us, coming alive. Play action fake to Dosh, the throw to the near side, and it's gonna be Dunning, the intended receiver again, and too tall for him. Too tall for... Oh, Mike Frey needs to step up and zip ball. that ball in there. Step up and zip it in. He has the arm to do it. With the incompletion, it'll be a fourth and five, and the Hornets will be forced to punt. These two teams really haven't had to punt that much tonight. When they have turned the ball over, it has been on downs more times than not when they have been stopped. Now the snap is perfect. Bulls kick a twisting kick short. It's going to hit at the 36 and take a bounce for the Bobcats. Finally, one of the Hornets downs it over there. Looked like it was either Ryan Dunning or Curtis West. And the football will be just shy of the 40-yard line. And the Bobcats will take over with their second possession of the second half. Bobcat crowd coming to its feet right down below start us. Start to crank it up. Give a little support. <laughs> 7.09 on the clock here in the third quarter along with Gene Johnson. I'm Tom Skinner. Receiver to the left is Ignis. Joey Schmidt to the right. High formation for the Cats. Five-man front for Kersley. The toss to Benton. Benton breaks it back, and he's up over the 40, near the 45. Looks to be nearly a five-yard pickup for the Cats on first down. Tackle made by Tom Lalonde for the Hornets. 
along with number 21, or pardon me, 22, Derek Streeter. And it'll be, uh, they're going to call it a four-yard pickup, second down and six. Again, the five-man front for bringing up the linebackers a little bit, but here's the toss to McGee. Oh, and a super play wow. by the defensive end, number 31, Brad Morris for the Hornets. That's a big play, Tom. That's just a quick play off the ball. Graham Blake was in the two tights at that time, and he just flat out beat this tight end on this side. Loss of four on the play. It'll be third and eight. And in a five-man front, I know different coaches will do different things, but in a five-man front, the ball comes to you as a defensive end. you got to crash hard to the ball, and that time a nice job by Morris as he did that. Backside end will box, and he's got outside responsibilities, but the near side end has to go hard, and that time he did. Man in motion is Ignis. Long count. White drifting back, throws to the flats, and... Wow, dangerous throw. Gene, he didn't really get a chance to set up a no, throw. No, no, that was it. Well, I tell you what, Tom, he wasn't as pressured as, as much as he thought he was. He had some more time to actually make that throw. But that was a dangerous throw right there. What a job Kersley did on defense that time. That's serious. Justin Cunningham, the one that was the closest to him. So it sets up a fourth down now on eight, and it'll be a punting situation for the Bobcats. And it's Josh Ignis back there. Flag on the play. Ignis with a twisting kick low. Caught, fair caught at the 29-yard line. Back the ball will probably be on in the 30. And I would think if it's against the offense, they'll decline this because that's pretty good field position. Uh, you give Josh Ignis another chance to kick the football, and he might put a 50-yarder on you. So I, I think the Hornets would be wise to refuse the penalty and take the ball at the 30. Let's see what they say. In fact, Gilliam, Gary Gilliam. I think they're going to wave it off. I think they'll decline this time, just like you said. Well, that's what they yep, do. That's what they do. They'll take that football at their 30 and go for it. So Kersley will begin their second possession with the football, nose of the football, right on the 30-yard line. Well, the last series, uh, Kersley's offensive series, we did see Frey throwing the ball three times in that series. He did not hit, did not connect on the passes, needs to zip the ball in there more, maybe shorter routes, but it certainly is going to help the running game when you start throwing the ball in the air like that. Their crossing routes, I think, have been big plays for him. Now Dosh with a big play via the run. Oh, nice work by Dosh out there, following Dunning, and also Clifford out there. Big 67 for Kersley out leading the way. Kevin Vandenberg also out there, number 74. Mike Alpin. Yes. Downfield blocking. I think Elfin's actually a, the right tackle, and he's downfield doing some work. Give Dosh a pickup of eight. So it's second down and a short two. Man on the right side of the wing is Dunning. The give. Number 31, Rob Morris on the carry. And he's near and uh, then some with Boy, that, first down yardage. That's the way Coach Pratt likes to pick up those first downs, too. Let's grind it out. Let's hard those football. Let's grind it out. First down and 10, 5 and 20 to go in the third. Kersley trailing by 7. They have never led in this football game. Bobcats jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Cats saw the Hornets respond with a touchdown drive to cut it to 7 at 14-7. Bobcats went up by 14 again at 21-7. Kersley scoring just before the half to make it 21-14. They give to Dosh. Dosh with a nice pickup over the 45 out near the 48. Tom, I saw his blockers. I read his blockers to the outside that time. Use his feet, bounce to the outside, turn that up. I thought he, he did a nice job there. You'll take that gain any time. But it could have been a bigger gain. He bounces to the outside. Give him a pickup of six on the play. He's sucking down now at four. And now let's see if maybe they go play action here. You have this feeling. You have this feeling that's this game going. And Kersley's just kind of hanging around, hanging around. That they're going to they're going to find a way to win this thing. Maybe wear him down. Just, <laughs> give to Dosh. 
Oh, Josh nice had cut. room to the outside, nice it looks cut, like. Yep. But you know what? Room to the outside normally. You know, against this Bobcat team, their corners and safeties are so quick. Yes, yes, yes. Dash with the pickup of, well, let's call it two. It's only third down and two. Well, we've called big downs throughout this game. Here's another one. This is big. Huge third down situation. It might even be four down territory for Kersley. The give in off left side, and it'll be near the first down state. I think he picked it up. Let the drive a wide. Gee, who was, was that Dosh on the carry? Yes. Yes, it was. I had my, my angle was screened just a bit. And he did get first down yardage. Picked up three on the play. He needed two. So it's first down and ten for Kersley. Sixth play of this drive. Their second possession in this third quarter. Clock ticking at 3 and 20. The center, big number 68, Mike Anderson, leads the Hornet. Seven to the line of scrimmage. The give inside to Dunning. Dunning, twisting, turning, bouncing off effort. people. Dunning with the pickup, call it a gain of five on the play. Brought down by number 92, Chris Manhattan, along with number 11, Jeff Rosam. So it's second down and five for the Hornets. Drive originated on their own 30-yard line. After forcing the Bobcats with a three and out. Receiver to the right side is Dunning. Reverse pivot, we've got a flag, and it will probably be procedure or motion. And what was nearly a first down pickup will get waved off. Dosh on the carry. Football near the 47, which is approximately where the first down stake is at. But I believe they're going to talk to a defensive captain right here. Well, that's too bad, Tom, because Kersley had a flawless drive going here. I mean, just punching the ball four or five yards at a crack, exactly what Coach Pratt wants to do. And it is motion. A little motion penalty. Yeah, a little penalty play over things like this. Second down now in 10. Hornets will have to try to shake it off. Bobcats now will strap things up, maybe come at them a little bit. Let's see if they blitz, try to put some extra pressure in there, in the trenches. Dunning at the left hash, flank to the left. High formation set, long count, play action fake. Rolling to his left, Dunning. Oh, nice going to Kirkland, and Kirkland, oh my, they say no. Oh. Let's see if we can watch this oh. on replay. Kirkland trying to sell him on the idea that he had the catch. We're going to try to see it on replay here. Boy, Frey does a nice job of looking over the field. Here watch him, he looks, he looks, he looks, he looks. In time, he zips it. Ooh, that's a oh catch. my gosh. That's a catch. That's not a catch? That is a catch right there. What? His hands were well underneath oh. it. That wasn't close. Wasn't even close. Didn't look like it. So it's third down and ten, and the Hornets have to overcome this. Bobcat defense with a chance to come up big here. The toss Watch to the Dosh. pass. Watch the pass here. Dosh with a chance oh. to run. Oh, and Dash oh, kept going an along the near on the far sidelines, pardon me. He stayed in bounds. Did he stay in? What an effort there. Near the first down stakes. Tom, this game's getting good now. There's, <laughs> there's, there's a big place. There's some huge hits out there. The stars are rising. The big play guys are coming to the front. This is what it's all about right now, I tell you. How about this now? Fourth down. Huge. Triple D. crowd on their feet below us. The place is rocking. Getting the crowd rocking and wheeling. Fourth down and one. A minute and 15 and counting here in the third. Football on the 38-yard line. Quarterback sneak, and he's got the first down. He picked it up. Good call. Junior quarterback, Mike Frey. Number two, a six-foot, 165-pounder following the center, and you can see the center jumping up and down. Number 68, Mike Anderson leading the way, and it's a first down pickup for the Hornets. 
I'm going to tell you, Tom, I've, uh, I've known the Frey family for a long time. Great stars over at Holy Rosary, all the Frey brothers. And they've got one leader out there. This Frey kid is not going to quit. I'll tell you right now, he will lead this team, and he'll keep them going. I'll tell you, both teams have several players like that. You go to McGee, you go to Ignis out there. On the Bobcat side, now the give left side and smothered at the 35 yard line was Dunning. Check that, it might have been 31 more. And I picked that up from Charlie Carmody, the public address announcer. We're going to follow Charlie's lead and call that a run by Rob Morris and a pickup of one. Second down and nine. Receiver to the near side, the flanker. That's Dunning, the toss to Dosh. Dosh away from oh, McGee. To the Dosh to the outside. Whoa. Lunging inside the 30. Maybe to the maybe to the 25 even, it looks like the original spot or the initial spot, pardon me. That'll be close to first down yardage. Well, that was a one-on-one -on -one right there with the star McGee from Grand Blank at the defensive back and Dosh on the offensive ball carrier and Dosh beat him that time. They'll meet again. Gene Johnson and I are going to put a challenge out to you right now. I would like to see someone convince us that you can spend three bucks better than watching high school sports, especially on a night like this. Absolutely super football being played here. And they're going to say that Dosh is just short, so it'll be a pickup of eight, and it's a third down and one now. This is as good as it gets. I don't care what level. I don't care what level. This is great high school football. But this is better than watching a college game. I'm telling you right now. 12th play, play of the drive, the kill. Big play. I believe it was the first man with Swatolski. Let's see. And it'll be a first down pickup. And it was number 28. And that's the final play of the third quarter. Jake Swatolski with the first down carry. Hey, little gut check time as we enter the fourth quarter of this game. I tell you that. Time to suck it up, guys. On both sides. Both sides of this stadium is filled, or are filled, pardon me, with folks on their feet. Standing room only, and the fans in the stands on the visitor's side, the fans down below us are on their feet. Fans playing. And what was the terrific halftime show here? We didn't get Wasn't that show. something? Awesome. That was magnificent. Awesome work by the band. Our hats off to the band and the director and the Pom Pom Squad out there as well. Cheerleaders. Good stuff. I'm already looking forward to next Friday's football game. Well, let's finish this one first. We've got a quarter here of great football. At least a quarter. At least a quarter. You know, like I said earlier, Coach Pratt doesn't care how long it takes to score. He just he just wants to score, but it could take the rest of this quarter for him to get in the end zone. I mean, that, that's what he would prefer, keep the ball away from the, the Grand Blake offense. Tell you what, big games like this, Tom, though, are won by the teams that want it the most. No question about it. It's gut check. You have to look inside yourself. The team that wants to win this game the most is going to win it. 21-14. Bobcats defensively, as you see their cheerleaders down below. There's more of the cheerleaders right there. The Hornets cheerleaders were on first. Now it's time for the Cat cheerleaders. Let's see who has what to cheer about here on first and ten. I formation with Dunning to the right. They give to the second man. That's Dosh. Dosh bounces off one man, fights forward. First man to put a lick on him. Was number 55, Matt Hoffman. I tell you, big, big Carson doc, died. number 86, Carson nailed him too. I finished him off. Good football player, so old Carson Doc is. Pick up of one, second down and nine. 14th play of this drive coming up. So far, the Hornets have not been able to equal the number on the scoreboard for points of the Bobcats. This drive could produce it. The throw. 
Steve Pizzoni. Oh. Great coverage out there by Benton, stride for stride. Sure was. And the pass too far out in front, and it'll be third down now and now. That ball was overthrown uh, slightly, Tom, but you're right. Benton had great defensive coverage there. Third down and nine. Two, Buy your 50-50 ticket, Tom. No, I did. Yeah. I wish I had. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice Hornets. spot there. Huh? Hornets are two for three on third down conversions in this drive. Receiver to the left, eye formation. There he that is. He has him. He has him. There it is. Oh, we got a play. We have a play. play. Ruffing. It might be a late hit. Let's see. There is a flag on the play. Looks like the hold. Huh? It is personal foul. Roughing the quarterback. The play Touchdown. will stand. Touchdown, Hornets. David Clifford, six foot three, over 200 pounds. I'm telling you, Tom, he runs like a deer. That's the third or fourth time we've seen him downfield like that. Now there's a potential big time tight end right there. Well, we'll see if we can look at it again following the extra point attempt. Poole will there work with the placement of the football by Joe Wallach. The ball is there. Oh, the kick twisting to the left and just inside the left upright. Game tied at 21. 11.06 to go in regulation. Who wants it the most? Here we go. I tell you what a nice throw by Mike Frey, though. Calm, cool. Good protection by his line. Look at that throw. Here's the throw. Look at the throw. And the, Beautiful. And the catch. Great concentration. And what speed coming out of that tight end. Junior Mike Frey with the touchdown pass. His sixth of the year. Fifteen play, 70 yard drive by the Hornets. There you see some of the Hornets on the sidelines. Chuck Schramm there, one of the assistant coaches, working with this team, the special teams. And right now, we talked about special teams earlier. Joe Delaney feels his team has an advantage in this area. Jack Kraskins has given up two scores on returns this year. Let's see how it plays out with 11.06 to go. Big return opportunody for Grand White. Well, so far tonight, I've had good kicks. That's it's kind of neutralized any return opportunities. Let's see if they let him just boom it away. He's been in the end zone a couple of times. That's this returnable. one will be short. It'll be returnable if it doesn't go out of bounds, and it does. Now, let's see if the Bobcats say, hey, we'll take the ball to 35, or whether they want the return and uh, have a chance for a big play. Take the ball to 35. Take the ball to 35. You know what? Let's see where they put it. They want to give their backs, give they chance, give huh? their backs a chance. Okay, here we go. Legal procedure penalty against the kicking team. What's it a kick again? Joe Delaney wants him yeah. to kick it again. First the defense is lining up on the ball. Do they have the option, Tom? You know what? I'm not sure. Do they have that option? It doesn't look like they have the option. Joe Delaney is going to find out right now. He thinks they do. And he wants to give his big play people a chance. That's a coach that's confidence in their ability, and they are going to kick it over. They are going he to kick it over. Has that option in it? Take it back. Yes, they are. Let's see if his kids can come up with the big play here. So Kersler will, will, will re-kick it, and it'll be Poole going back, towing it up five yards back from his original kick here. Well, Coach Delaney fought for that one. He was absolutely right. He fought for it. Now let's see if it pays off for it. Don't forget, they would have had the ball in the 35-yard line. We'll see where it plays out now. And now let's see if Houle continues to try to kick it deep or if he tries to squib one, kick a line driver up there and take away maybe a little bit of the ability of the return. Get a block, Ray! Who's that on the 
takes it, and McGee will take it at the 10. McGee to the 20, 25, 30, and the gamble doesn't pay off this time. The Bobcats will start with the football on their own 30-yard line. Tackle made by number 53, Justin Cunningham. Well, Coach Delaney thought that, uh, you know, get get the ball in my star's hands and uh, uh, maybe they can do better than that 35. So he took that shot. But, you know what, I like the know, confidence. I do too. I, I like that call. Say, hey guys, let's go. We're going to do it. I believe in you. I want you to get your licks back there. Receivers to both sides, man on the slot, to give to the sole setback, and that's Benton. Football. Football's on the Football. road, and oh. it's going to be recovered by number 63, I believe. Huge Grand play Boy. for Let's number see. 63, Thomas. That's him. That was huge. Number 63, Eric Root. And I'll tell you what. Oh, that's that a game a, ball right there. That's at a this game point. football, you betcha. They got the still of two yards. Oh, no, Reggie, put two hands on that ball. Take out of that baby. Second down now and eight. Clock running, game tied at 21. The give the bat. <laughs> over the 35, and you know what? That's a good, a good uh, signal to your player. Hey, we know you. You put it on the ground. We're gonna come right back to you. Right. And he picks up four. And he was hit hard. He was stuck there. Derek Streeter put the shoulder pad on him. <laughs> what a fun, fun game. These guys are really playing out there. Gain of five, third and three. Pro set formation to give to McGee. McGee bouncing forward, following the blockers on that left side. Pick number 60 for Grand Blank, Anthony Coleman. Along with Justin Riker what a, on that left side. What a battle inside, Tom. What a battle inside. The yeah. defensive gonna... offensive linemen are just going at one another the right now. We might have a measurement, huh? Yeah, and I, I think it'll be a first down by the length of the football at least. You have much, much better eyes than I do. That's your call. It might even be more than the length of the football, at but it'll be a first said, down. At least you said. And it's a length of a football. A little more than that. A little more? A little more than that. So it's first down for the Cats. And let's see how they respond to the 15th place, 70 yard scoring drive by Kersley. Blocked running. Folks, everything that you hope for in a big football game with matchups like this, we've gotten so far. Ignis to the right, Joey Schmidt to the left. Pro set look. Let's see if White will throw the football on first down. First and 10 from his own 41. Now they go to McGee. The senior breaking to the outside. What a Back run. to the inside. Dale McGee with the big pickup on first down. Justin Cunningham finally brings him down. Tom, this is the point of the game where you give the football to the guys who have got you here. McGee is certainly one of those guys. He is a leader. He's a senior. He can reach the Give him the football. Get it in his hands. Senior leadership showing up front as well for this Bobcat offense. Justin Reichert, Matt Hoffman, Eric Root are all seniors. The tackles are juniors. Playing like veterans, though, now. Good draw. And oh, Benton, watch the speed. Benton with the first of wow. speed. Up over the 50, inside the 45, down near the 40, before Jake Swatowski, the safety, comes up and puts the stop. Kersley defense, Ben don't break. Ben don't break. Here we go. Get inside the 20 and they buckle up. Don't let them in. 12-yard pickup on the play. First and 10. Grand Blank on the Kersley 40. Put pass to the right slot and Josh Hickes for the catch. diving catch. Great catch. <laughs> and Ignis with the grab. Good. That's a soccer player, huh? That's a, I tell you what, he's a great football player. There you he go. He has really showed me 
something. Josh, you're finally getting your due from big number 88 here. <laughs> you're this working your way him. in there, Josh. Gene Johnson caught a few passes in his day. That's a tough kid. I like that player. Second down and two. The give to the second man. That's McGee. He oh, what tackles for a wow. loss. What number 31, Rob Morris, along with number 57, Mark Grimes. And McGee, you don't see him get tackled for a loss very often. The intensity has definitely picked up here on both sides. Loss of two on the play. Third down and four. Bobcats one for one in third down situations in this drive. Eighth play of the drive. Get to the outside, get the ball a bit. Get it to the outside. Or get it to McGee. Either one of those there guys McGee, to the either outside. Either one of back there. And they're going to go to McGee, the there senior. The senior with the a first outside. down run. And more. Got to run. Got to go. 20. Keep going. Don't get too tricky, McGee. You need to run, buddy. Dale McGee with the first McGee. down carry. Finally pushed out of bounds by Switalski, the senior, or the uh, safety, pardon me. The junior safety, the football on the 19, a 16-yard gain. Inside the 20, this is where Kersley gets tough. This is where they won't break now. First and 10, 6.47. Black stopped on the play. And oh, was knocked out oh, of bounds. And oh, 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 oh. in his tracks oh. by Justin Cunningham is Reggie Benton. He had to take that, he said. Oh. He had a big picture of a, a five and a seven right in his helmet. Tattooed. Oh. Loss of three on the play. But Reggie jumped back up. Good hit. Got back up in the huddle. Good defensive football play right there, though. Wow. Cunningham, the middle Cunningham linebacker. Cunningham just smoking in there, untouched. He's a six foot, 210 pound senior middle linebacker. Is Justin Cunningham playing big? Pro set look right now. White gives to the second man through. That's McGee. McGee up inside the 20, back near the original line of scrimmage. Gary Gilliam on the tackle. Also in on the tackle, Mike Harriman. Keep an eye on Schmidt. He hasn't uh, he hasn't seen the ball in a while. He's he's a threat at any time. This is a good opportunity. Third down and 10, five and 20 to go from the 19 of Kersley. White barking the signals out, long count. Drop back, three-step look. There he is. Throws to Schmidt, way out of bounds. And it'll set up a fourth down and 10, and they'll probably send the field goal team out. There goes my soccer player, Tom. When he's a kicker, you want him to be a soccer player. Yeah. When he's not, oh, okay. you want him to be a football right. player, and right. he's been a football player. He's been a football He is a football player. The ball only spotted on the 27-yard line. huge, huge. 37-yard attempt. The snap is perfect. The hold is there. It's an end over, end twisting kick, no good. Off to the left. Men don't break, Kersley. That's what they've been doing tonight. Inside that 20, they tighten it up. 5.07 left to go. In regulation, Hornets take over on downs from their own 20-yard line. Tom, I'll tell you right now, in as many years as I've been doing this, helping you out here at Comcast, this is one of the best, if not the best football game I've ever seen. And it's not over. Far from it. Got a lot more to go where this is from. Folks, at our at the next timeout called by either team, 
at the next timeout call by either team, we're going to take a timeout ourselves uh, to uh, make a tape change. Right now, that was Dosh on the carry. He got, us, got himself back to the original line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down and 10. This has been a very fast, uh, at least seemingly by comparison to the opening half, a very quickly played second half. The ball's been on the ground. We've had a long drive by Kersley, and then Graham Blank did the same thing, bringing it back the other way. Play action, and... You don't see this Clay a lot. He's going to keep it, and he's got nice a game out near the first down stakes. I think he's going to be close. Let's see where they spot the football. They're going to say that he stepped out shy of the 30, so it'll be a gain of about, uh, let's call it seven. You don't see Frey run a lot, but you can see right there, he has good quickness and toughness. Third down and three. Watch Dosh on this play. This play has Dosh all over it. Number 31 in the football game is Rob Morris in there for Dosh. He is in there for Dosh, yes, and there, oh, what a, Morris with a nice first down effort. pickup. Nice effort. Dosh, I thought, went off with a little hitch in his kitty up a moment and ago. Morris came in to replace him, did a great job. 5'10", 185 pound senior, picks up five on the play. And that offensive line came exploding off the ball, too. First down and 10 for the Hornets. Clock nearing the four minute mark to go here in regulation. Along with Gene Johnson, Jenny Posey, I'm Tom Skinner. Up in the press box at Grand Blank High School, Frank Thomas Field. Blanker to the right is Dunning. The give to the second man through is Rob Morris. Morris twisting and fighting for yardage up near the 35. You know, you have to like, two. Tom, you have to like Rob Morris. He's, he's looked very good tonight. Good quickness, toughness. When he's had the opportunity to carry the ball, he's done a nice job. Brought down by John Richardson, and it looks like Matt Williams, or pardon me, Jeff Rosa for the Bobcats. So it's second and eight. The receivers to both sides, or on the right-hand side, the toss to Dosh, who's back in there. Oh, he cuts inside. Oh. Dosh runs over oh. one man. Dosh inside and the 45. And a late hit will give Kersley 15 more yards. Reeves on the tackle. Dosh coming in after shaking off an injury. Tell you what, Reeves did a nice job there, though, Tom. Wide open, uh, open field tackle. It's a late hit, no question. Look at this. Yeah, we'll see if we can wow. Test. We'll test our crew in the truck, see if we can come up with the replay. Well, what happened here? I saw the replay. And it, it wasn't one of those big intentional shots as he's laying down. He was hustling, and he kind of tripped into it, Tom, is what happened. You know what? I think you're right. He might have tripped into it. Yeah. He did. He did. It's one of those things. Good. We'll watch the replay after this play right here. First down and 10 for the Hornets. On the grand blank 27-yard line. They give the Dosh inside. Dosh to the 25. You know, both kickers. Here's the replay on the fine watch run the by Dosh. Watch the fine run by Dosh. You're right there. The good blocking. The fine tackle by Reeves, then right after the play. Uh, you yeah, know I don't what? know. Uh, he I didn't get away from it. Yeah, the young yeah. man really could have avoided him, it looked like. Yeah. Pick up like he was trying to. He didn't hurt anything. He didn't hurt anyone. It did hurt something. Not a good penalty, but here we go. Second down and eight. Two and 20 to go. Timeout called by Kersley. Good timeout. And with this timeout, here at Grand Lake High School's Frank Thomas Field, we'll take a timeout. We'll come back with the rest of the fourth quarter and whatever else might be necessary to finish this one up. Score 21-21 with the game of the week. Welcome back to Frank Thomas Field. And in what has been an outstanding high school football game, and you, Gene, you mentioned it earlier, doesn't matter what level, high school, college, or pro, this has been an absolutely awesome football game. What great entertainment on a Friday night. Both what? of these 
Sorry, Gino, go ahead. No, go ahead, Tom. I just want to say, what great entertainment. It's been, it's been real fun to watch this battle. And I'm telling you, these last two, two minutes of this game are going to be terrific. Bobcats have led it from, had led from the start until Kersley on their second to the last possession. A 15-play, 70-yard drive, tied it up on a third down and nine, 24-yard touchdown pass. And now on second and eight. Well, there's that same pass pattern. Grace got him open. again. That's there Hornets. it is. Touchdown, Hornets. That's twice tonight. I'm going to tell you something. Mike Frey is a gamer at quarterback. And you know what? Uh, young Mr. David Clifford. For Sensational. Tight end. It's not too bad himself. Sensational. We'll see him for after. someone with his size to get down to the middle of the field, the way he gets down the middle of the field, it is just sensational. After, there you see the crowd ringing the field. After the extra point attempt, we'll show the replay. And right now, Eric Houle will work off the snap of Joe Wolak. The kick is up and it is good. And the Hornets have taken their first lead of the football game, 28-21. Tom, they never went away. Watch this play. Look at old Mike Frey set the ball in there. That man, six foot three, over 200 pounds. Beat everyone downfield. Concentration makes the two touchdowns tonight. Same play. You know what? I remember a tight end like that from the Flint area who was taking the throw from a left-handed quarterback. Listen, listen Tom, I never had that speed. <laughs> <laughs> I never got down the field like that. Let's test our crew one more time after the kickoff. If we can show the replay once more. You know, what I think is impressive here is the protection that Frey got. He had all time, all day to throw the football. Yes, he did. He did. On both times that they've thrown that route and on the touchdowns that they've scored, he's had good protection. It's not over. There's still two minutes and 14 seconds of a high-powered offense out there. Graham Blake still come back and send this game to the OT. Stevens along with Benton and McGee are deep and the kick is going to go out of bounds. It'll be flags. Let's see if we can show that replay again now. Here's the protection you're going to see. What? You're right, Tom. Look at that. He was able to stand up no. and stride right into that throw. That's, that's a big, strong receiver going after that football, too. And he had 1,001, what Frey did, 1,002, 1,003 to throw that football. And when you have that much time, you can lay it up there. You know, Gene, on, on his first touchdown catch, he was catching that with his hands and, and uh, body and he just kind of you know, dropped in over the defender that time. He went up, the ball, and he went up with block. great hands, concentration, on, followed the ball go. all the way into the hands. Big play. And you can you can see he, with his strength, he played the defender off him who actually fell right at his feet as he was making the catch. Bob gets to decline the penalty or they'll, right they'll again. take it. They want to have the kick in. This is identical. Identical. The 12. And he's up to the 25. Gotta get out here. Finally knocked down and falling out of bounds at about the 25. And David Clifford on special teams. How about that? He's helping into the tackle. I believe Slotowski was also there. And Ryan Dunning. Three different Hornets were there. And the Bobcats will start the football on their own 25-yard line. 2.09 left to go in regulation. A Kersley defense has to be definitely in a sort of prevent defense. Two safeties. Never let the Graham Blake receivers in back of you. Nice That's throw. Nice throw and pass. Wow. What a well executed play right there. Well thrown and well caught by Carson Tack for the first down. Brought down by Ryan Dunning. And it'll be a pickup of 18, call it 19 yards on the play. First down and 10, 2.04 to go, and only timeout called by the Hornets. An outstanding football game, and it all started with the Bobcats on the scoreboard first, a five-play, 61-yard drive, and it was capped off by a 34-yard run by Dale McGee. The kick was good. After a short Kersley possession, it took just one play. It was a 38-yard scamper by Reggie Benton 
and he had pushed the Bobcats up 14 nothing, and we're still with a lot of football yet to be played in the opening quarter. That second touchdown by the Bobcats scored with 5.31 to go in the opening quarter. Then it was Kersley's turn. They responded with a six-play, 34-yard drive, and the Hornets, or pardon me, uh, the Hornets had a three-play, 62-yard drive, and they pulled it within seven. Two possessions later, Grand Blank responded with a six-play, 34-yard drive, capped off on an eight-yard run by Dale McGee after Dosh's touchdown and pulled Kersley to within seven. We'll finish our review in just a moment. First down and 10. Bobcats with it. They give to McGee on the draw. McGee out near midfield, and he runs for that sideline and stops the clock, and the football will be just shy of the 50. Jake Swatelski, who's been active from his safety spot, running him out. I like the call, Tom. That was a seven-second play. Picked up some positive yards. Stop the clock. Well, Grant Blake does need to get downfield now. Second down now and four. 157 left to go. The Bobcats can strike from any spot of the field. Blanker to the left, split end to the right. Shotgun formation. White dropping back. A lot of time. Nice job. Across the middle. Nice complete to Joey Schmidt at the 34-yard line. First down, Hornets. Or, excuse me, Horn, uh, first down, Bobcats on the Hornets 30. Three-yard line, Rich Dosh on the tackle. I like Schmidt as a receiver. Soft hands, gets himself open. Timeout called by the Hornets. Here we go. <laughs> it's not over yet, Tom. Gene, as I look around the field, it is absolutely packed here. I'm not sure if our cameras... This is incredible. I've never I, seen a crowd like this at I'm a high school I'm not sure if game. our cameras can show the standing room only crowd to the uh, right of, uh, of the press box here as it wraps around the field. But this is a huge crowd here. And uh, we talked earlier, where do you spend $3 any better than to see high school football like this? This is terrific stuff. Bobcats right now have thrown the ball twice in this drive and they've run the ball well once a 19 yard reception by Carson Dock started it, six yard scamper by Dale McGee, sandwiched in between another pass and catch Joey Schmidt on the receiving end of a 16 yard uh, pass from John White what do you see right now with the Bobcats as they head back out to the football field what are they going to try to do, is it going to mix and match with the I, I think it's going to be Tom but I tell you what, Graham Blake with White has the quarterback who can throw the football in there, they, they you need to run the out patterns, get the ball into Schmidt's hand. Ignis on the, on the out uh, top is is uh, equally as, as talented. He of course, to the we right. have the two backs. Flanker to the left is Schmidt, the draw to McGee. Oh, he's got room on the outside. Oh, you got to stay outside the there, guys. Stay outside. And he'll have a gain of about three on the play. And the clock and the runs. Oh, they call the timeout. They'll call time. Yep. I'm not sure if I like that call right after a timeout there. Well, you know, first, Gene, first down play like that. Uh, certainly, it was a Kersley timeout that, that, that we had. Now it's a Grand Blake timeout. Right. But, but I'm saying Grand Blake had the opportunity to to really talk about what they wanted to do here, and I know they want to get the ball into their best player's hands. That's what you want to do in these situations. But uh, there you see good. the scoreboard. We set the stage for you. A minute 42 left to play here in regulation. Grand Blank, after having leads of 14-0 and 21-7, evaporate against a very determined men that don't break Kersley defense. And they have seen the Hornets come back and take the lead. Now, with the big play off offensive capability of Grand Blank, if you're, if you're Kersley, who do you try and stop? You've got well, this, you've got McKee, you've got... Tom, Tom, Kersley's been here. They've been here. They're not inside the 20 yet. When they get inside the 20, that's when Kersley starts playing defense tonight. So... Ignis, Ignis will go to the right. Smith to the left. Shotgun formation. 142 to go. Second and seven. McGee out here. Flat pass to McGee. McGee is tackled. Still no tackle out there by number 23, Eric Rosner. 
again, trying to get the ball in your best player's hands, but you've got to continue to try to get the ball downfield. Better to have to go. You have to get the ball downfield. And he got back on the wrist. Oh, he got a foul. I mean, they, uh... Huh? Wow, that's huge. Wow. What? That's what a personal. Is... That's a personal foul, Tom. I didn't see it. I don't know where can the the flag's way behind the playback here. Wow, that's a roughing the quarterback uh, penalty. Wow. That's big. But here we go with the Kersley defense. Now they're inside the 20. Now they'll stand up and play defense. See how what Graham Blank has for him here. 135 to go. First and 10 from the Graham Blank 16. That's a good call. Kersley 16. Oh, nice play. Justin Cunningham, number 53, the first man to him, yep. along with 23, Rosner. Cunningham doesn't get there. McGee scores on that play. Gilliam also into the tackle. And a timeout called. Was that a Bobcat timeout on that Gene? I, I, I was looking at the player that was down, and it, uh, Jenny Posey nodding that yes, it was, so yep. confirming. Yes. And both teams have got to be close to having spent all three of their timeouts. Grambling's got one left, and Kersley has zero. So we've been told that the Bobcats with one more. Obviously, with Kersley ahead by seven, this is four down territory. There's no no field goal no, uh, no. coming into play here. Both teams have strong legged kickers. Both teams have missed field goals, but now it's nothing but get to the end zone. And for the Bobcats, they really they really need to be aware of the clock now even more because with one more timeout, they've got to save that for an absolute last last ditch effort, uh, big play. I look for them to start using the sidelines. Use the pass. sidelines, Tom. That's what I was going to say right there. Use the sidelines. I also look for Reggie Benton. He hasn't carried the ball in the series, in this drive here. He is the lone setback. McGee is in the right slot. Second and six. Play action fake. Nice play. The Got blocking. All kinds of blocking. Touchdown. Wow. Bob yeah. has scored with a minute 20 left to go. What a well executed. Great call by Coach Delaney, number one. Great execution by the kids out there, number two. He had a wall of blockers that maybe you could run behind there, Tom. I might be able to run behind a, a wall like that, yeah. but it's going to take me about three or four times as long to get there. Big play here, huh? Extra huh? point attempt. Here's, here's our snap. man, Ignis, our soccer player out there. The snapper we along, snapper is Carson Dock. Good hands with the tight end. This is big. Your big, holder big. is Rosa. This is it. Snap is there. Hold is there. The kick is up and it is it's good. perfect. It's the Bobcats have responded to the Kersley touchdown drive with a 75-yard drive of their own. Seven plays, 75 yards. Abs Tom, absolutely fabulous drive right there by Graham Blake. They did a little bit of everything right there. Great play calling by the coaching staff and those kids out there in that football field. Really, if I talk about sucking it up, they sucked it up on that drive. This let's, game's not over. Let's watch the sidelines here, Gene. You see all the pageantry of the high school football. Oh. I'm not sure if our crew in the tuck truck can bring the replay back of the touchdown run. Let's see if we can get her ready. And after our kickoff, let's run it if we could, please. There is lots of football yet to be played here. Seven play, 75 yard drive. Boy, this crowd buzzing now, aren't they, Tom? Wow. Bobcats took 49 seconds to do it. No, I don't know if I do that, Tom. Clifford. I don't know if I do turn. that. Clifford with some running Clifford room. Clifford will run this ball. Tom, I don't make that kick if I'm Graham Blake. Puts the ball down there. Gives him Boy, I tell you what, they get They put in Clifford's hands, the most, the, danger, the most dangerous guy they've had all night. Uh, for Ray Stevens finally brought David Clifford down. 
And you're right. Now, you know it's what? the first time he's brought him down tonight. I'll tell you that. No, one of the things that comes into play here. Look where they have the football, Tom, the on the 40-yard line. That, yeah. And a I kicker mean, with a leg, too. A real strong one. Now, and you have that gamer, Mike Frey, back at quarterback. Watch out. Things can happen. Flags and whistles before it starts, and it'll be either procedure or encroachment. Somebody was in the zone, the zone early. Here's the touchdown as we saw the wall of blockers develop let's bring, there. Let's bring that replay down back one more time. That was a terrific run, and you're right, it was a big wall of blockers. Just yes. Here it is again. Watch this play develop there. You talked about Benton not having run the ball. They went the fake to Benton and brought McKee back. That's right. They certainly did. Nice. That's what I say. Beautiful call by uh, Coach Mulaney and the staff right there. First down and 15. Kersley from their own 35. And Tosh brought down. Oh, we got a late mask. hit. You got a face mask, I think, there. Or a face mask, one of the other. But attention, oh, he tried to get his hand away from him. just tapping him. No? Huh? Your call? Late so, hit? Pick up a four, and then they'll add 15 to it. Wow. Both teams, the Hornets whistled for the 15-yarder yes. yes. on the touchdown drive by Grant Blake that equaled, uh, or that was the equalizer here with the PAT kick, and now it goes Graham, against the bottom. Grant Blake must get in some type of prevent defense right there. They're not playing, they're playing a the straight-out defense. They need to drop those safeties back there. No one gets behind the safety. Regardless, run fast, no one gets behind them. And they're up tight. They need to get back, Tom. Ball on the 46 of Grand Blake. Gonna get behind him, Tom. Uh-oh. That oh, is good Reggie job. Reggie Benton nearly had the interception. Pressure on that time, and Frey just got rid of it. Had two receivers out there. Clifford was one, and it looked like Dunning was the other. Now 42 seconds left to go here in regulation. We've seen Frey in this game. Frey has done it. Uh, he did it against Carmen Ainsworth in the last seconds through the touch winning touchdown pass. He has the arm that, uh, that can do it. Gunning wide left. You got Dasha Clifford on this side. Every time in this formation. Dash yep. yep. the carrier. Dash on the carry. That'll, uh, that'll get him maybe a yard. Stops the clock. Third down and nine. This is one of those crowds, Tom. We had 10,000 to start the game. I think we have 11,000 now. No one is left. We've, they've, they've stopped in as they saw the lights on, drive down South Saginaw Street. Trips to the right side. Here's that. They threw the ball forward again, though, Tom. Uh oh, Dash. No, it's out to There's Frey. no flag. Trey up over the 40, inside the 35. Tom, you can't throw the ball forward twice. That, and maybe I'm wrong. That is, that is a, a pass. It's clearly a forward pass, it looks, from here. You can't advance that ball through the air forward twice. But well, <laughs> they've got away with it twice tonight. Obviously, I don't know the rule right there. Yeah, I, I don't know it either because that was clearly, it looked like two forward passes. Nice play. Nice play, but my yeah. gosh. Yeah, if you get it to work like that. Yeah. First down. Here's again, Bray, though. Seconds. Bray's dangerous again. They oh, need about oh, 10 boy. yards here for the field goal kicker to get in range. He got it. Oh, it's intercepted. Dale McGee with the big play interception. Who and else? the Bobcats thwart the Hornet drive. And there you see number 23. Dale McGee with a huge big, interception. Big players making big plays. That's a star. That's a star right there. Well, there's 21 seconds left. Hornets defensively now have still got to be very wary because the Bobcats, even though they are 87 yards away, they're going to try to throw the football. Now, I tell you what, 
That's just as dangerous sometimes, I tell you that. Give him a seam, get him out in the open. I tell you, why stop the clock? Why are they, uh, uh, they're satisfied they're going to go in the OT? Here we go in the OT. What a football game. It's only fitting that two teams, as evenly matched as these two are, would have to go an extra session at least yeah. one overtime. Great, great four quarters. Great show, Tom. I don't think that you're going to have a chance to go home yet. Oh, no, I don't want to. I'm going to stay here all night. I have a feeling I may, too, the way this thing's going. At the end of regulation, 28-28. And we're still we're still gonna take your nominations for how you can spend three dollars better than this. I don't think you're gonna convince me you can. Let's review here quickly, folks. Again, Bobcats jumped out to a seven nothing lead. A 34 yard run by Dale McGee, capping a five play drive. Bobcats with the kick by Ignis were up seven nothing. After stopping Kersley on four plays. They five plays and then forcing a fumble. The Bobcats went 38 yards, just one play. Reggie Benton scoring, going the distance from 38. Josh Ignis with the extra point kick and Grand Blank up 14-0. The Hornets responded. This is all still the first quarter, people. The Hornets responded with a three-play, 62-yard drive, and it was capped off on a one-yard run by Dosh after a 58-yard completion to Keenan Kirkland. Set it up on the one, Dosh ran it in, and the kick by Hool, Eric Hool, made it 14 to seven. Again, we're still in the first quarter. Bobcats came back early in the second, a six play, 34 yard drive. The Bobcats with Dale McGee on an eight yard run, finishing it off his second touchdown of the game. Josh Ignis' kick made it 21 seven, and for the second time, Kersley was down by 14. Late in the second quarter, the Hornets on a seven play, 70 yard drive, scored with 114 left to go in the opening half. And it was a 22 yard pass from Mike Frey to Rich Dosh, who caught it in the left blast and just outran everybody on the score. And that was that, uh, that was our uh, whole scoring in the opening half, 21 14. In the second half, the Bobcats opened with an eight-play drive, couldn't put any points on the board, they could, could not convert on a 37-yard field goal, and finally, the Hornets, early in the fourth quarter, after both teams had missed that field goal opportunity, the Hornets, on a third and nine conversion, Mike Frey to David Clifford, a 24-yard touchdown pass, and with the kick by Hool, the game was tied at 21 all. Late in the fourth. In fact, with 2.14 left to go in the fourth, Kersley on a seven play, 80 yard drive after the Bobcats were not able to convert on a field goal opportunity. And there you see this part of this big crowd here. The Hornets went 70 or went seven plays at 80 yards. And again, it was the connection from Mike Frey to David Clifford. This time it was on a second and eight, or pardon me, uh, on a second and eight and the 17 or the 25 yard conversion to number 17 Clifford, his second touchdown catch of the ball game. Dave Kersley, their first lead and Graham Blank responded like a champion. They, with just 2.09 left on the clock, got the football, went seven plays, 75 yards, capping it off. A 12 yard run by Dale McGee. The conversion kick tied it up at 28 and we are headed to overtime. You see the captains out on the field and they're going through the coin toss now to determine who will have possession first. And I'll tell you, it doesn't matter, I don't think, Gino, who gets possession here. Both teams have shown they can come back and respond being behind. This is just one of those opportunities. Now you, you go out and you strap it on for four more on offense, four more on D. That's how you do it. And, and who did you, in, in this situation, Tom, I, you know, I was thinking as you were uh, recapping the, the game there, who has the advantage in this situation? Is, is it Graham Blank with her powerful offense, or does, does Kersley with her more control offense and the great defense? You know, is there an advantage in this situation here we, in this overtime? You know what? 
I, I guess we'll we'll throw the and let me throw the advantage thing away just for a second with this matchup. I remember in our first year back in 1985, a Powers Grand Blank game right here. Powers scored late in the football game to tie the game. Grand Blank held and back, forced a fumble in overtime and got the football, kicked the field goal, won the football game 17-14. In that game, the home team won. Here with the big crowd. I don't know that there's an advantage because both teams have come back tonight. The Bobcats came back when it looked as though the Hornets maybe had stolen a little bit of their heart uh, coming back and taking a lead after being behind by 14 points. The Bobcats put the equalizer up and, and the kick uh, was good. They've shown that they've got some heart moxie as well. I tell you what's going to make them into play here. We've had several field goal attempts. The, the leg has been strong enough, but the accuracy hasn't been there. That may come into play. We got the ball down. We had the ball in the 10-yard line. We're going to punch it in. Get four downs to do it. Three downs you don't have, you're going to kick that field goal. So, And then both teams have good field goal kickers. The Bobcats will start with their defensive unit out on the football field. Players are hugging each other out there, trying to grab oh, yes. each other's hearts and souls for one more stand of four plays. Oh, yes. Ball is on the 10-yard line. Hornets. Come to the line of scrimmage, ready to play football. I keep my eye on David Clifford if I'm Graham Blank, I'll tell you that. Split left, slot left, eye formation look. Man in motion. That's Beagle, he leads the block, dash. Behind the fullback in the motion man is gonna get the football out here or inside the 10, down near the seven. Coach Pratt feels he just punched the ball through there. Keenan Kirkland back in the football game. Second down and seven. No clock, folks. Each team with four chances from 10 yards out. The toss to Dosh. Nice block right out there. Oh, great play. He had some room to run there. That closed in a hurry. Who was that out there? Matalski with the block, but Bob Stolwald still got in. Nice made the job. big play. 49, Bob Stolwald. And I don't think there was a pickup of anything there, so it's still third down, or it's still seven yards to go, but it's third down and seven. Brada Clifford. Clifford is, tight end, is the tight end on the left side. Dunning is flanked to the left. Eye formation. Kirkland is the tight end to the right. Kirkland is going across the middle. The throw in the end zone. Oh! Incomplete. Intended for Dunning. And Frey took a pretty good hit. He's pulling himself up off the carpet out there and putting that pressure on him. Number 64, Mike Agnone. Boy, I tell you, these kids are selling out right now, Tom. <laughs> It'll be a field goal attempt now for the Hornets. Ball will be spotted at about the, nine, uh, about the 14 yard line. 24 yard attempt. The snaps have been perfect. The holds have been there. The kickers have just, they've been strong with the kick. They've just been a little bit off target. Good kicker though, good kicker here. Cool, right hash. The kick just is up. Watched it through, did he get it? And he got it. He got it. A 24-yarder is good inside the left upright. And we have a flag. Let's see what's going to go again. I tell you what. If it's they're talking to the Kersley players. If it's players. a personal foul and an automatic first down, it is roughing the kicker. They'll take, oh. the, they'll take the points off. Oh. And, go back. and they got a chance to put a touchdown. Huge, huge penalty. Oh, Tom. Now they have the option to take the points off, they are. but now they have the first down, right? Now it's the first down, they've got four more plays. And it's first down from oh. the three yard line. Oh. Oh my. That. So it's first down and goal from the three for the Hornets. And racing to the line of scrimmage 
Racing there is the center, number 68, Mike Anderson. He leads his offensive lineman to the three. Blanker to the right is Dunning. Long count, reverse pivot, the give to Dosh. He bounces off one man, and he lunges in He's for there. the touchdown. They took advantage of a huge, huge break. Three that's yards. what you have to do. Now we'll ask our crew to get the replay ready. We'll look at it after this conversion attempt. Very big conversion opportunity here. Ball will be spotted at the 10. Last snap, even on, on the field goal, was a little bit inside. Nice job by the holder to get it down. This time the snap is there. Perfect. Kick is end over end and right through the uprights. 35-28. Here's your touchdown run, Gino. That's just a basic give the dash and the offensive line firing off the football and reading the holes. Tell you what, Chris Van Hatton, number 92, and along with number 94, John Richardson got some good penetration, but they didn't get the help they needed behind him. Now Kersley goes on defense. Tom, this yes. has been a, a fabulous football game. I have said it throughout, so have you, and, and, and the viewers have seen it. I just hate to see that penalty there. It kind of tarnishes it a little bit, but we'll see. Yeah. Grand Blaze got to come back and score, then we throw that penalty away, we'll come at him again. And who do you try to stop if you're Kersley? You've got Reggie Benton out there. You've got McGee. Look for that counter fake to Benton. And the give back to McGee on the inside hand. Oh, fumble, fumble snap. Uh -oh. Uh oh Let's see who has the football. Ooh. If Kersley has it, this is over. Graham Blake has it. Graham Blake has it. Looks like oh, White big, Phelps. Big recovery by the Cats. They've oh, got another wow. chance. <laughs> that was close right there. Wow. Tom. Big play by White to cover it up. Good hustle. Lalonde, my Tom Lalonde was right there. So the Bobcats will try to regroup right here. It looked like they were maybe in a position to run that counter. They ran with McGee. Ben the lone setback. Swing left side. Another goal. Center screen to McGee. McGee with running room. Oh, McGee. He's in touchdown. There. Bobcats have answered with a touchdown. The screen pass. Tom, what a call. Another great offensive call by Coach Delaney. The, the middle screen, screen to McGee. On the, from the 10 yard line. Great call. And we'll watch the replay after this extra point attempt. A terrific hey. play by McGee. And the blocking up front. Tom, in this situation, Grant Blake goes for two and make it. Do they win the ball game? Do they have the option to go for two? Well, they have the option to go for two. You bet. And the last team with possession it, it determines you know, whether, the, whether the game goes to another overtime, if they kick, or if they go for two, okay. they can win or, or lose. Okay. I'll tell you what, I, I love the play up front by the Grand Blank offensive line. Look at that play developed there. Look oh, at the blocks. Terrific Look play. at the blocks. Well, let's show that one more time. Let's bring that replay back one more time. Well, the guy out front is Matt Hoffman, number 55. He's leading the way. Justin Reichert there. Eric Rood. You watch Hoffman, 55, is going to be at about the goal line. Watch out, White lets it play develop. 55. Heavy rush. Boom. There, boom. boom. Nice block. Nice block by 55 on Absolutely. the umpire. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a nice block. Get out of the way. Well, he was in the way. He got out, too. <laughs> oh, boy. That offensive line opening the hole after the screen developed. You know, we say big plays, but every play's a big play. Every play. PAT kick. Boy, this is... Snap. Can't have the fumble. We got to set it down. It's Top up. And it's good. It's good, and we keep going. <laughs> the extra point attempt is perfect by Josh Ignis, and we go to a second overtime. Okay, now I'm glad to see that, simply because we take that penalty out of play now a little bit, and we'll come over and start over again. Overtime, what? number two coming up. <laughs> oh, and good shot of the great crowd here. Juxtaposed over the shot of the players. You know, Tom, I, this has really it's been a tremendous crowd. They're all still here. The balloons 
releasing up into the air now. And I mean, and as I'm watching the game, the great respect, and you mentioned it early, the great respect that these players have for one another. They tattoo one another and then help them up off the ground. Good play. Pat them on the rear and go on. Well, Andy Piazza, the athletic director here, I don't know if you can guarantee us this kind of excitement every time you, we come out here to Grand Blank, but uh, it has been a great ride. Thank you to Andy and his staff, Charlie Carmody and uh, Norm working in the press box here. This has been a wild one. And I'll tell you what, this is a tape that you players out there who have played the last four and a half quarters, you want to keep this for the rest of your life. So as you're watching this game, make sure your VCR is on and tape this, this, just so you have it, guys. Now well, the Bobcats are going to start with the first, for the football first this time. Coaches and cheerleaders and players on the sidelines imploring this crowd to get on their feet, scream and yell as loud as they can for the cats on the field. And it'll be Joey Schmidt split to the left. Josh Ignis the flanker to the right. Your tight end is Doc, Carson Doc on the right side. I formation, reverse pivot, the give to Benton. And Benton inside the 10, fighting for everything he can get. They'll spot the football. At about the eight, I believe, eight or nine, he did pick up some positive yardage there. A good strong hold by Kersley. Good strong hold there. A gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. Mike Anderson on the stop for the Hornets. Fair play has to hurry here. A little late getting the play in. Bobcats send Joey Schmidt wide left. Ignis is flanked to the right. Shotgun formation, the blitz is on. The swing in the right flash and the pass is incomplete. Third down and eight. John White looking over to the sidelines, waiting to get the play sent in from Coach Joe Delaney. Ryan Reeves will bring it in. What's going through the, the hearts and minds and souls of the players out there on the of, field? A lot of prayers. A lot of prayers. I'm telling you right now, that's all you could do. Suck it up. You try to make the biggest play of your life on every down. Reeves to the left, Ignis to the right. Pro set. Quick look right side for Ignis. He's caught it at the five. And he's tackled immediately. Big play out there by John, uh, Rich Josh, number 24. And it'll be a pickup of, well, it looks like four on the play. So it'll be a fourth down and four. Field goal attempt from the 11. It'll be a 21-yard attempt. Holder is Rosam. Snaps perfect. Falls down. Pick is up, and it's absolutely it's good. It's dead good. center through the uprights. How about that, Ignis? He made the catch there, got drilled a little bit, shook it off, got up, kept him in the game. Thirty-eight, thirty-five. Graham Blank with the lead. Tom, I can't help but believe that Clifford, the tight end, I, I know I've talked about him tonight, but I can't help but believe a, Six foot three, 200 and some pounds, can get down the field like this, fray with the ball, that that cannot be potent offense right now for the touchdown and the win. Kersley right now, 10 yards away from a victory here. The Bobcats drawing the line, saying no way, no way do you get inside our goal line. Anderson, Mike Anderson leads into the line of scrimmage. Dunning to the left, eye formation look. Play right up the heart of the Kersley offensive line. The give to the you. first man through, that's Switalski. He was running hard. He was grinding. First man did not bring him down. Richardson with John Richardson with the tackle for the Bobcats. And 
and they're going to say he picked up, well, let's call it two on the play. Now they'll say, now they'll say three. Second down and seven. Dunning the receiver to the right side. I formation clip for the tight end of the left. They give the dash. Dash uh, inside the whoa. five. Down to the four. Maybe the three. I tell you what's happening now, Tom. That offensive line of Kersley is giving that crease to Dash. That's all he needs is a crease to pick up a few. Third down and three. Dash running behind the offensive line. I don't line. think Graham Blake can stop Dash twice. I don't think it can yeah, happen. The, the Bobcats right now are going to get a timeout call by Kersley. The Bobcats are going to touch each other on the chest put their finger on each other's numbers and say, trust in me, I'll trust in you, and it'll take a big play defensively for the Hornets. They're running behind Mike Anderson at center. Mark Grimes is the right guard. Mike Alpin is the tackle. Left guard is Greg McLean. Curtis West is your left tackle. They go 200 plus, all five of them across the front, especially that right side with the center spot. Anderson goes 6'2", 35. Mark Grimes, 6'2", 250. And Alpin is 6'1", 260. Third. Play action to Dosh. Clifford, touchdown. Third down and three. Let's see if Coach Johnson's chalkboard yeah, you like that one, huh? accurate. There you see Chuck Schramm talking to his defense. Saying, or, guys, you're up to the challenge. Or you give the ball to Dosh twice. They can't stop you. This we, is a great back. This is a great player. We shall a big see player in a big game. The defensive front, at least in their normal five-man front, although they're probably in their goal line defense, the normal five-man rotation is Chris Bannett, John Richardson, Brian Rude, Mike Agnone, Andrew Fletcher, although John Robbins is in there a lot as well. Third and three. They give the dash inside. He's brought down short. Stopped him once. Stopped him once. Can you stop him? What do they do? What do they do here, Tom? Fourth they kick pass. or they go for it? What are they going to do? They're going to try to put this game away. It looks like Coach Pratt is. Yes, he is. They're going for it. They're trying to put it away right now. The winner or lose. Here Don't we go. Last here. play of the game. 38-35. That'll either be the final score or else the Hornets will pack six on and get the win. Dunning to the left. Slotowski the fullback. Dosh the tailback. The top, he give the dash. He's got room. He stopped you, he's in. Yeah. Kersley, the Hornets win in double overtime. 41 to 38. Rick Dosh with the touchdown scamper and the Hornets. Bob the field fans and look at that. And the Hornets meet in the end zone. And this grand blank crowd is stunned as the Bobcats. Showing courage time and time again. And when it was all said and done, the Hornets come up with one more big play. And what a great, Grand great Blake fans football are starting game. to applaud a standing ovation for their team. And there you see the pandemonium in the end zone. And we'll try to get our crew to come back with the replay of the winning touchdown. Gene recalled it. He said twice to Dosh and they're in. And that's exactly what happened. Well, Tom, I just didn't think that they could stop the great back Dosh for three yards if you give the ball to him twice. Obviously, Coach Pratt felt the thing, same thing. He was going for it, the win or the loss, right there. Last down of the game, give the ball to your greatest player, maybe in the history of your school, let him take it in for the, for the win, and that he did. You know what, though, Tom? Look at this field here. You've got Coach Pratt out there congratulating every one of the Grand Blake football players. Here's your run, Gene. The pup. We'll, Look at we'll, that effort, though. We'll, on both sides. Great guys. effort on both sides. Let's bring it back one more time, folks. These defenders down here did everything they could to try to hold him out of the end zone. Dosh did everything he could to try to get in, and he got in. Now, when you look at what's happening on the field right now, the shaking fabulous. of hands. That, that, that thing that we see out there in the field right now, uh, people, is something to, to remember. And kids from both sides, I'll tell you what. And as parents, I tell you, you couldn't uh, Here's the watch winning the replay touchdown again. one more time. Let's watch the blocks and see where the blocks are. Get Kirk sealed. With a seal block. Nice seal block. Nice Switzowski. lead by the fullback. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and Dash is in and they begin to celebrate. Well, I'll tell you what, kids and coaches and parents, 
We hope you did it. We hope that we did it justice. We did the best we could up here in the press box at Frank Thomas Field and what has been a thriller, a double overtime nail fighter. If you left early, it was maybe one of the biggest mistakes you're ever going to